What's up guys, this is your favorite fanfic YouTuber, the fanfic majesty, and welcome to another amazing video. You can follow me on Patreon for exclusive stories. 2 Chains. Chapter 26 Shark Tooth Pirates. Advertise here. In the vast blue sea, the Shark Tooth Pirates, under the command of Captain Shrike, turned and attacked the Black Pearl. Their pirate flag was rising on the horizon not far away, and the eyes of the pirates on the ship were shining with greed. The Sharktooth Pirates are a group of notorious pirates who are known for their cruelty and ruthlessness and specialize in plundering passing ships in the East China Sea. Their ship is mainly equipped with artillery, followed by the captain. The strength of the Sharktooth Shrike is also famous for its long serrated knife. Sure enough, I have an idea. Timo confirmed the Sharktooth Pirates' idea through the magnifying glass, and immediately came to the deck through the watchtower rope. Looking at Timo, Tren thought that he also came here specially to discuss, so he lowered his eyes and asked. Timo. Which one do you prefer, braised or steamed? I think braised pork is good. Li Jing insisted on his own idea. Looking at the two of them, Timo sighed, and then said, Captain Tren, a pirate ship is attacking us. Pirates. After hearing this, Li Jing instantly picked up the sword that was placed directly next to the ship's pole and trotted to the side of the ship. At this time, the shark tooth pirate's ship could be clearly seen. Captain Tren, the other party is already very close to us. Li Jing turned around and said, Because we are close to Rog Town, are there more pirate groups? Tren, who met the pirate group for the first time after sailing for so long, frowned. Then he lightly tapped the deck with his foot, Xiao Hei, put the fish in the refrigerator in the dining room, and bring the knife I hung in the room. No problem, Captain. Xiao Hei, the boat elf, nodded, and then began to use his fat little body to drag the fish's tail. The black pearl has no means of attack or defense, so Tren cannot let it suffer losses. Timo, find your own place. The main thing is not to let them have the opportunity to board our ship. No problem, Timo nodded then took his sniper rifle and walked towards the other side of the ship to find a convenient position. Li Jing, you and I are facing them head on. They are not strong, so we will fight quickly. After saying this, Tren took the gambling from the boat elf Xiao Hei, raised his thumb, and unsheathed the famous sword. No problem. Li Jing also drew out his sword, and the two of them quietly looked at the shark tooth pirates not far away. On the shark tooth pirates' side, as the distance gradually approached, Shrike, as the captain, also noticed that Tren and Li Jing on the Black Pearl were two swordsmen. Shrike smiled ferociously, raised his long serrated sword and raised a finger. Young ones, give them a round first. As soon as he finished speaking, a hole opened on the side of the Sharktooth pirate's ship, and black cannons were aimed at the Black Pearl. Bang, bang, bang. The artillery of the Sharktooth pirates roared, and the shells roared towards the Black Pearl like meteors. The explosions echoed on the sea surface, like rolling thunder. Several shells missed their target and exploded into the sea, causing water jets to reach the sky. Boom. Faced with the cannonballs that were as dense as locusts, a few still fell straight into the sky above the Black Pearl. Lao Fu Kai Shang Shou Mei Ji Tian, Ni Men Shi Bu Shi Yu Dian Guo Fen La, Li Jing Jian Guang Ru Dian, Shun Jian Nuo Yi Ji Kong Zhang, Jian Shi Ru Hong, Yi Zan Ji Sha, Shu Mei Pao Dan Ying Sheng Er Lai, Zai Kong Zhang Zan Fang Chu Zan Land of Fireworks. Swordsman. Looking at Li Jing, Shrike's expression froze, but he had no fear at all. After all, he was not a swordsman. Young men, get on board quickly. Shrike shouted his eyes as bright as a torch, staring at the distance between the two ships. He picked up the long serrated knife that was shining with cold light, and like a ferocious cheetah, he pounced towards the Black Pearl. He wanted to be the first to board the ship while Li Jing was defending against the shells. This was also his usual technique. However, a faster figure appeared like lightning. I'm sorry, you are not welcome on my ship. Tren raised his knife and brought it down. The blow was like a thunderous blow, directly knocking Shrike back to his own pirate ship. Tren, on the other hand, stood firmly on the guardrail of the shark tooth pirate ship, like an unshakable mountain. The shark tooth shrike with a bounty of 21 million is nothing more than that. Even the judgment mechanism of gambling delusion was not triggered. The corner of Tren's mouth raised slightly, revealing a disdainful smile. HMPH, they are just swordsmen hired by merchant ships. I don't know how many I have killed. Shrike shouted coldly, and the serrated sword in his hand cut through the air, making a sharp whistling sound, like the summons of Shinigami. Go to Tren. Then give it a try. It's just right. I'll use your head in exchange for some money. Tren snorted coldly, and with a strong shake of the knife-wielding arm, he directly stopped the Shrike's long serrated knife. Such a lot of strength. His sword skills are obviously average. Looking at Tren, who was forced to stop with just one blow, Shrike's eyes darkened slightly. He hates guys who rely on physical talent the most. Strength is useless, you still have to practice. Shrike smiled scornfully raised his arm, and used the serrated features of the long serrated knife to jam Tren's knife, and pulled it hard in front of him. Genius is useless in front of me. Shrike grinned, then turned his knife to break away, then turned around and slashed. Bump. The long serrated knife fell heavily, and the only thing left to chop was not Tren but the ship's deck. When, 
How could you react? Shrike couldn't help but be stunned. Because people like me are usually not called geniuses, but dead dogs. After saying that, Tren pulled hard in his hand, and the sawtooth in Shrike's hand fell out of his grasp, and then he made another instant slash. The next second, Shrike felt an excruciating pain in his arm, as if his entire arm had been torn apart. Damn it, I'm the, shark tooth, Shrike. The Shrike screamed in pain, retreated quickly, picked up his weapon, kicked the ground with his legs, and swept away the sawtooth in his hand like a storm. But Tren, he was able to avoid this fatal blow every time. He, he is hiding by relying on his body's instinctive reaction. Seeing Tren's unreasonable dodge, the somewhat capable Shrike directly saw through his ability. On the other side, the pirates who wanted to take the opportunity to throw out their claws and climb onto the Black Pearl died suddenly before the ropes in their hands could be thrown out. Is there anyone else? Seeing their friends falling one by one, whether they were catching him with their hooks or trying to help him, the other pirates immediately looked around. But they didn't see anyone else, or they didn't even hear the gunfire. No, there is. Before a pirate could finish his words, his eyes suddenly turned white and he fell into the sea unconsciously. In a corner of the Black Pearl, Timo slightly pulled the bolt, and a small poison mark retreated into the sniper rifle. Number 33, let me see who is the lucky winner next time. Chapter 27 Arrival. Advertise here. You are actually a devil fruit user. Looking at Tren's almost perverted instinctive dodge ability, Shrike was shocked. He took the initiative to distance himself from Tren at the first moment, and stared at Tren with his vigilant eyes. Devil fruit. After hearing Shrike's words, Terran gently turned the knife in his hand and said with a hint of doubt in his tone. I have never eaten that kind of thing, and I have never even seen one. Quote. His expression was very sincere and he didn't look like he was lying. However, Shrike did not dare to relax at all, because the strength Tren showed was too amazing. If he was really not a devil fruit user, how could he have such powerful strength? If you are not an ability user, with your strength, how can you be unknown in this vast sea? I actually have no impression of you. When Shrike said this, he suddenly lost his expression. If there is such a powerful person, but no news leaked out, then there are only two possibilities. One is that this person has been keeping a low profile and is unknown, the other is that everyone who knew him did not survive, so the news could not spread. Thinking of this, Shrike swallowed involuntarily and tried his best to keep his voice calm. How about we just treat today's matter as a misunderstanding and let's just say goodbye? Ah, Terran seemed to have heard the biggest joke in the world. You are the one who started the trouble, and you are the one who wants to escape now. I am the leader of the whole group, don't you want to lose face? Before he finished speaking, Terran had already taken the initiative to attack, and slashed out the long knife in his hand. The sword's light was as sharp as a single word, self-created word one. Damn it, I'm going to fall, Shrike screamed in his heart and hurriedly raised the long serrated knife in front of him to try to resist. Just hearing a, dang, sound, the Shrike was knocked away with his knife. He fell heavily to the ground, and a trace of blood spilled from the corner of his mouth. So strong, Shrike struggled to get up, his eyes full of fear. At the same time, in a blink of an eye, his pirate group was almost all dead under the hands of Timo and Li Jing. My dream, my partner. Shrike looked at this scene, his eyes couldn't help but become firm, his hand holding the weapon tightened slightly, and his eyes slightly raised to stare at Terran. Since you won't give up, don't blame me for being rude. They are all. As Shrike spoke, Terran suddenly waved his long knife and flashed past. A head flew up in an instant, followed by a Shrike's headless corpse, which fell down powerlessly. I'm so sorry, my readers won't be interested in boring dreams and memories like yours at all. The corner of Tren's mouth raised slightly, showing a smile, and at the same time, he put the gambling delusion in his hand into the scabbard. Immediately afterwards, he winked at Li Jing, and then without hesitation reached out and tore off a piece of clothes from the Shrike's corpse. After quickly wrapping the Shrike's head with this piece of cloth, Terran jumped and easily returned to the deck of the Black Pearl. On the other side, after receiving Tren's signal, Li Jing completely ignored the clamor and roar of the other members of the Shark Tooth Pirates. I saw him flashing, leaping into the air in an instant, drawing out his sword and swinging it violently, and a fierce sword energy with a strong aura of a Chinese swordsman suddenly erupted. This sword energy easily split the Sharktooth Pirate's ship in half, and then the whole ship slowly sank into the vast sea. It feels good to move your muscles and muscles occasionally and get a sweat. Li Jing, who returned to the Black Pearl, casually inserted his sword into the scabbard, and then slumped down on the armchair beside the ship like a deflated ball. He didn't even bother to put the sword back on his waist, just put it casually beside him. Only 35, Li Jing, you should slow down the speed of chopping the boat just now. Timo came out from behind at some point and looked at Li Jing and said slowly. Ah, a quick victory, this is the order of Captain Tren. Li Jing waved his hand, and then looked at Tren. But, Captain, why are you holding that guy's head? It's really strange, when did the leader have such a hobby? Timo also stared at Tren in confusion. Looking at the eyes of the two people, Tren smiled slightly, then threw the Shrike's head to the deck and said with a smile. Of course it's for the other members to return as soon as possible. 
At this time, the system summoning progress has reached, summoning 55%, with Aaron's defense breaking gift package, so Terran especially hopes that a certain smoker in Rogtown can give us some help. As the episode of the Shark Tooth Pirates passed, Tren and his party, who were not far from Rogtown, arrived at the place of beginning and end near noon the next day. Rogtown has arrived, Captain. On the Black Pearl, the ship elf Xiaohei said cheerfully, shaking his cute little hand. I saw it. Tren stood on the bow of the ship, looking far away, towards the lively town not far away that was like a harbor transit center, with the corner of his mouth raised slightly. Timo, who was standing on the observation deck, naturally saw Rog Town, but he did not pay too much attention to it, but concentrated on wiping the weapons in his hands. He secretly thought to himself, well, maybe we can research new poisons later. Thinking of this, the corners of Timo's mouth under the mask couldn't help but raise slightly. He really had no interest in activities like walking around town. Therefore, he had already agreed with Tren that he would stay on the Black Pearl. However, what was completely different from Timo was Li Jing. This guy was even more excited than Tren when he looked at Rog Town. He danced and shouted, Captain Tren, look, there are so many ships in the harbor. It's really spectacular. But, it's strange, why didn't I see a pirate ship? Quote. Terran rolled his eyes helplessly and Kaido said angrily, please, no pirate ship would dock at a normal port with such arrogance. Do you think they are all as upright as us? After saying that, Tren couldn't help but roll his eyes at Li Jing again. Xiao Hei, pay attention to controlling your speed. Then, find a better place and park the boat there. Tren ordered the boat elf Xiao Hei. No problem, Mr. Captain, please rest assured. I will definitely complete the mission successfully. Xiao Hei once again gave a cute little gift to Tren, and then made a beautiful diving action on the spot, with a, swish, sound then he escaped into the Black Pearl. Immediately afterwards, the speed of the Black Pearl gradually slowed down, and at the same time it began to automatically simulate to find the best parking position. Finally, the Black Pearl found an ideal parking location. The weather is calm there, the water is crystal clear, and there are some beautiful coral reefs and small fish schools around. Chapter 28 Smoker Advertise here. Rog Town, located in the East China Sea, is the entrance to the Great Route and is known as the, Town of the Beginning and End. It is famous for its important geographical location and historical significance. Secondly, it is the starting point of many pirates' dreams. It is also the birthplace and execution place of One Piece Galdi. Roger. Therefore, the Marine Headquarters has set up a Marine base here to make it an important military stronghold. It is also to prevent pirates from crazily pouring into the Grand Line, or it is a dividing point for pirate strength. At the Marine base in Rogue Town, in the Colonel's office, a tall, muscular man was holding a cigar-like cigarette in his mouth. His appearance gives people a sense of perseverance and majesty, with short silver hair and sharp eyes. What he wears is also different from other Marines. He wears slightly tight black overalls, paired with a white jacket. The jacket is also unzipped and has no inner layers. It is the same as Trent, but Trent is wearing a shirt. He is the Colonel of the Marine Headquarters and the current Colonel stationed at the Marine Base in Rogue Town, Smoker. Colonel Smoker. At this time, a girl with glasses and short hair hurriedly backed away from Smoker's office door, and was choked by the strong secondhand smoke as soon as she entered. Ahem. Uh, what's the matter? Smoker looked at the girl in front of him and frowned. The girl's name was Dasky. She was transferred from the headquarters to serve as his deputy two months ago. Yes, there is a large ship approaching the port. We are not sure if it is a pirate. We hope you will go there. Dasky said. Big ship. No news reported. Smoker asked, blowing out a puff of smoke. Merchant ships from various countries that pass through Rog Town are registered with Marine. This is also to prevent accidental detentions. Of course, you are saying that pirates do not pretend to be merchant ships. Of course, it is because the registration has facial recognition. Marine will recognize faces based on the information. Unless a pirate has the ability to disguise himself as a fruit, it is usually a thankless task. After checking, four ships entered today, and there is no information about that ship. Dasky flipped through her diary, and the work information in it was densely packed, like a group of tadpoles swimming in her fingertips. So, those guys are very brave. Smoker had already made a guess, so he put on his gloves and picked up his long iron halberd that looked like a three-pronged sword. This weapon is called the, Ten Hands, and it has a sea stone embedded in the top of the weapon. It was a reward he received when he was at the Marine Headquarters. Colonel Smoker, are you ready to do it yourself? Dusky blinked. She had just arrived and she always liked the scene of Smoker beating up pirates, because she hated pirates. If it's like what you said, then guys with ships of that level are generally unlikely to be weak. Smoker said as he walked outside. Dot dot dot. In the Rog Town Harbor, as the huge Black Pearl docked steadily, the Marines gathered on the shore were like an iron wall. They held long guns and stood ready. In the town behind the harbor, many pirates who sneaked in noticed this scene. Captain Terran, do you want to take action? Timo looked at the group of Marines and said expressionlessly. He didn't know when he had two more gas grenades in his hand, just waiting for Terran's order. This is really my first time seeing Marine. Li Jing also touched the beard on his chin, thoughtfully. Timo, put your things away, we are not pirates, we are good people. Tren looked at the scene on the shore, 
the corners of his mouth raised slightly, and he showed a smile. At the same time, a deafening sound of a motorcycle engine came from it, it was Smoker and Dasky. When Smoker arrived, all the Marines were relieved. Colonel Smoker, this is the ship, Dasky said looking at the huge black pearl. This, is quite big. Smoker couldn't help but be shocked when he saw the black pearl for the first time, but he quickly came to his senses, raised his head slightly, and looked at the young man on the bow of the ship with burning eyes. Seeing Smoker looking at him, Tren jumped directly from the boat. Seeing Tren with a knife on his waist, the Marines all became nervous, but Tren did not take action and walked straight towards Smoker. As the welcome ceremony in Rog Town so lively. Looking at the boy, Smoker exhaled a puff of thick smoke, stared at Tren like a hawk, and asked, Who are you? Jenny Tren, an ordinary adventurer. Adventurer. Ha ha. Smoker raised the corner of his mouth with a disdainful sneer, Do you think I will believe you? Pirate. Pirate. Tren's face changed drastically, as if he was struck by lightning, and he was shaking all over. No, Colonel Smoker, you can eat shit, but you can't talk nonsense. Open black lens bracket summon 60% close black lens bracket. You, Smoker was about to retort, but was interrupted by Dusky behind him. Colonel Smoker, there is no arrest warrant for him. Then he is also the seed of a pirate. Smoker glared at Tren fiercely, as if he wanted to eat him alive. Oh, it turns out that the difference between pirates and civilians is just Marine's words. Tren sighed slightly, with grievance written all over his face. Officials are different. Just arrange an identity for whoever you want to die. Seeing Tren's aggrieved look, Smoker couldn't help but grit his teeth. Jenny Tren, right. We Marine are the existence of justice. Then is this justice? Tren spread his hands and said righteously, there are 300 people in a small town surrounding a civilian ship. Isn't this a betrayal of justice and a denial of the government? Quote. Summon 65%. You, Smoker was speechless for a moment. If Tren was a pirate, he, Smoker, could definitely represent justice. But not only was this guy not a pirate, but his own people surrounded him. He could said that the initiative was with Tren from the beginning. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Tren. After confirming Tren's identity, Dasky took the initiative to step forward and bend over, with apologies written on his face. I am Colonel Smoker's deputy. My name is Dasky. Because of your ship, our Marine made a wrong judgment. If you need compensation, we can. Money. Of course you have to give me money, but it's not compensation. Tren waved his hand, and then shouted, Li Jing. Captain Terran. Li Jing, who heard the voice, jumped from the boat like a bird and threw Shrike's head at Smoker's feet like a piece of trash. This is, Smoker frowned. Let's take a look. My expenses in Rogue Town are still waiting for me. Tren chuckled. Immediately afterwards, Li Jing drew his sword and slashed lightly. The cloth wrapping the head was cut like rags, and the head rolled out. This is, the bounty of 21 million belly, the captain of the Sharktooth Pirates, Sharktooth Shrike. A pirate with a bounty of tens of millions in the East China Sea is already considered a very famous pirate, so when Shrike's head was thrown out, many pirates who were watching the show in the dark frowned. Marking Tren and his gang is dangerous. Chapter 29 Rog Town Advertise here. I didn't know that adventurers had the habit of working part-time as pirate hunters. Watching Shrike's head roll to his feet, Smoker took a strong drag on the cigarette in his mouth. Then he spit out the cigarette butt, then lit another one, and slowly blew out a thick puff of smoke. Of course not, because this guy came to give me money on his own initiative. Tren said with a frown as he gently waved away the secondhand smoke in front of him with his hand. Also, Colonel Smoker, don't you know that blowing secondhand smoke to others can harm their health? You may not be afraid as a user of the smoke fruit, but ordinary people like us can't stand it. Are you an ordinary person who has killed millions of pirates with bounty money? You're a liar, Smoker complained in his heart. After hearing what Terran said, Dasky also raised his head and agreed, Colonel Smoker, Mr. Terran is right. As she spoke, she subconsciously looked at the knives on Tren and Li Jing's waists. After all, this was just her hobby. From what this guy said, it sounds like it is. When I usually go on missions with Colonel Smoker, the smoke is so thick that it makes me choke and uncomfortable. A Marine soldier said with a frown. That's right, another soldier agreed, and Colonel, he can even smoke two cigarettes in one breath sometimes. What you said is not powerful enough. I even saw Colonel Smoker smoking seven cigarettes in one go. Another soldier interjected. Obviously he is a user with the smoke fruit ability, but he smokes like a heavy smoker all day long. All the marines immediately started talking about it. In fact, these marines have become much more relaxed since Dusky confirmed that Terran and his gang were not pirates. Asshole. Looking at the chaotic scene, Smoker felt a little unhappy. He couldn't help but take down the cigarette he had just lit and stubbed it out. That's right, Colonel Smoker. Terran smiled slightly and took a step forward. So, can I enter Rog Town now? Jenny Tren, I will always keep an eye on you. You'd better not do anything inappropriate. Smoker stared at Tren closely and warned. Then, he took the initiative to step aside, indicating that Tren and her companions could pass. Summon 70%. Looking at the 70% progress, Tren is very satisfied and the readers are very happy. A sensible guy. While Smoker gave way, 
Timo on the Black Pearl also put down the sniper rifle he had set up. He stopped worrying and at the same time withdrew the poison mark mixed with sea stone powder. The sea stone powder mixed into this poisonous mark gives it special toxicity. Sea stone is an extremely rare substance that has the ability to restrain those with devil fruit abilities, so once it is hit by this poisonous mark, it will even powerful espers cannot escape its poisonous effects. This is the great thing about the Black Pearl. Although it does not have the ability to defend or attack, all the materials you need can be found in the ship's laboratory. As Tran and the two walked into Rog Town, the farce in the harbor gradually came to an end. As the only place that leads to the great shipping route, Rog Town's prosperity is self-evident. It not only has buildings with unique harbor town characteristics, but also a bustling commercial street. It is no exaggeration to say that here you can almost see businessmen from all over the world. They were selling their products hoarsely, especially those fruit shops, butcher shops, taverns, etc. These are the first choice shops for the pirate group to replenish supplies, and can be said to be one of the biggest highlights of Rogue Town. After all, pirates who can set foot on the Grand Line usually don't lack money, so they will buy a large amount of supplies before setting off. It is worthy of being the, place of beginning and ending. Its prosperity and flow of people are completely incomparable to other small towns in other places. Trend sighed. This is the first time I have seen so many people. Li Jing also nodded, and then looked left and right, looking like an old naughty boy. However, Li Jing also needs to pay attention. Many of these huge crowds of people are not good people, even if they pretend to be very good. As for Tren, forgive the kid, he really doesn't have this kind of observation ability. Who makes the system without a mall? E winking face. When Terran and Li Jing were walking in Rog Town, Dasky, who had left with Smoker at first, found the two of them. Mr. Tehran, wait, huh? Hearing someone calling him, Tren couldn't help but stop and look back, but Dusky bumped into him. Ahem, Miss Dusky, the impact is quite good. Tren coughed a few times. Sorry, Carrot. Dasky adjusted her glasses and bent down quickly. It's okay. Tren waved his hand, and then said, Why are you so anxious to find us? That's, the bounty of Sharktooth Shrike. Dusky said, handing over the note in his hand. Terran took it and looked at it. The general content was, Thank you for eliminating harm to the people, and the government needs to deduct 30% of the 21 million bounty, so only 14.7 million belly is left. I have sent this money to your boat, Mr. Tren. Your boat is so high-end, and it also has a conveyor belt. Speaking of this, Dasky suddenly thought of something and couldn't help but whisper. But Mr. Tehran, is there a ghost on your ship? I always feel like I'm being watched when I get close, and my neck gets cold. Ha ha. Looking at Dusky, Tron thought of Timo on the boat and couldn't help but chuckle. There are definitely no ghosts. It's just that I have an adventure partner on the boat. You must have been noticed by him. As that so, then your companion seems to be a very knowledgeable person. You still know this. Hearing Dasky's words, Terran couldn't help but be startled. Why don't I know? Colonel Smoker and I both came from the Marine Headquarters. Dasky raised his chin slightly. You must know that the background of the Marine Headquarters is different from that of the branch. Just talking about Smoker, his teacher was General Zephyr, and his classmates at the same time were either generals or lieutenant generals. I really didn't expect that Miss Dasky is actually a direct descendant. If things continue to develop at this rate, I'm afraid it won't take a few years to be promoted to lieutenant general. Tren, who had already understood everything, followed Dasky very cooperatively. Sichi continued. Oh, thank you for your praise. In fact, I still have a lot to learn, he he he. Dasky suddenly became shy after being praised by Tren, and she scratched her head in embarrassment while saying, a gentle laugh. At the same time, Smoker, who was hiding around the corner not far away, saw all this. Seeing Dasky's shy look, he was so angry, don't I praise you before? If someone else praises you a little, you will laugh like a fool. You have to remember that your mission is to find out their true identities. Smoker muttered to himself. Chapter 30 Li Jing's, Sword. Advertise here. Is there anything else? Looking at Dusky, Tren smiled and said, he is a promising young man, focusing on peace is the most important thing. Looking at Tren's harmless and gentle expression, Dasky was stunned. Not only Tren, but also Li Jing's appearance was calm and approachable. Mr. Terran and his adventure partners seem to be good people. Colonel Smoker must be obsessed with catching pirates and demons. Dasky thought to herself. Miss Dasky. Seeing that Dasky didn't reply to her, Tren reminded her again. Um, oh oh. Dasky reacted and was speechless for a moment, I'm just sorry for my behavior just now, so how about you let me take you two for a walk? I happen to be interested in adventurers, things. Looking at Dusky's face that couldn't hide what was in her heart, Tren raised her eyebrows. Captain Tren, she is here to visit us. Li Jing whispered. You can see it, but can't I? Then let's. Just let him follow. There's nothing to do anyway. Tren said softly with a joking smile on his lips. He was already thinking about how many emotions he could harvest from Dasky, but he just didn't know if she had Smoker. There is much to offer. Thinking of this, Terran nodded, then I'll bother Miss Dasky. It just so happens that I'm not familiar with this either. No problem. Dasky's face lit up when Tren agreed. 
This was the first task Smoker had entrusted to her besides handling the paperwork. It's not that stupid. Not far away, Smoker saw the threesome and blew out smoke. He was just about to follow, but the phone bug in his pocket started screaming. Colonel Smoker, there are pirates three streets to the left, requesting support. These pirates, looking at the nervous look on the phone in his palm, Smoker bit the cigarette butt. Then he saw that his destination was not far from him, so his lower body immediately melted into smoke, soared into the sky, and flew towards the street. Go. In the busy street, Dasky was patiently explaining to Terran, while Li Jing who was following behind was holding some kind of strange fruit in his hand, but his eyes were cast into the air. As this a devil fruit user, if there is a certain amount of energy attached to the sword, it should be able to kill him easily. So, Mr. Terran, you two are both swordsmen. Dashi said in amazement, her eyes full of admiration. In fact, as early as the beginning, Dasky noticed the long swords worn by Terran and Li Jing at their waists, but she kept suppressing her curiosity and waited for the right time to ask. Terran smiled and replied, Li Jing can be called a swordsman, but I can only be regarded as a newcomer at best. He was not exaggerating. In fact, in most battles, he relied more on his extremely hard, didn't win gambling, and his excellent physical talent to defeat the enemy through tough confrontation. Even the unknown pirate Shrike could see how terrible Tren's swordsmanship was. Swordsman. Hearing Tren's words, Dasky's eyes instantly lit up, and she stared closely at Li Jing's sword. There is a kind of longing and yearning in her eyes. Summon 75%. Li Jing felt Dasky's fiery gaze, and couldn't help but feel a sense of pride in his heart. He cleared his throat and pretended to be modest. Ahem. Li just became the number one swordsman in the Shang dynasty by luck. Then, then, your sword. Dasky pointed excitedly at the sword on Li Jing's waist, her voice trembling. Is it one of the legendary 21 skills of the sharp sword? Li Jing, however, looked confused. He touched his sword, shook his head and said, what sword? I'm afraid the little girl made a mistake. This is clearly a sword, not a sword. Terran, who was looking at the system interface on the side, saw this and quickly explained, Miss Dasky misunderstood. Li Jing's sword is indeed different and does not belong to the category of knives. That's it. Dasky nodded, but his eyes were still fixed on Li Jing's sword. After a moment of silence, she finally plucked up the courage to ask, Um, Doc can I see this sword? Of course, no problem. Li Jing was very generous. Without saying anything, he took off his sword and handed it to Dasky. This sword was a standard item for officials of the Shang dynasty. The scabbard is engraved with some ferocious animal patterns, the patterns on the hilt are also clearly visible. Dasky carefully took the sword and was completely shocked at just one glance, both the unique design of the sword body and its appearance were completely different from any famous sword she had seen before. Then, Dasky took a deep breath, held the hilt of the sword with both hands, and pulled it out hard. In an instant, the cold light shone in all directions, which was dazzling. I have seen countless famous swords, but none are as good as this, sword. Dasky put the sword back into its sheath, and then took out another small notebook of his. Can I record it? Dasky pleaded seriously. Uh, it's just a sword, it doesn't matter. Li Jing looked at Dasky's serious expression and was a little at a loss because he still had five or six spare ones in his room on the ship. Aligato. Seeing Li Jing agree, he expressed his gratitude to Li Jing with a 45-degree bow. Then, she carefully observed Li Jing's sword, as if appreciating a precious work of art, and recorded it in detail in her famous sword book. Open black lens bracket summon 85% close black lens bracket. By the way, the famous sword patterns on it were all hand drawn by Dasky, so when Terran saw this scene, he didn't care about the summoning progress, but couldn't help but sigh. Miss Dasky, if you don't become a marine, you might as well become a designer. This is just another hobby of mine since childhood. Our dream is to be a marine. Dask smiled sweetly. Obviously, she was very happy to have recorded a completely new weapon. After a while, Dasky put away the pen, turned to Li Jing and asked. Excuse me, what is the name of this sword? Does a sword like mine have a name? It was issued by the Imperial Court. Li Jing was confused inside but he didn't show it because he enjoyed Dasky's admiring eyes. So Li Jing said in a deep voice, I, this sword, is called a precious sword. Sword. The sword really lives up to its name. Dasky suddenly realized it and recorded it in the book. You also said that my team of kings is obviously about the same as me in naming ability. Why don't you call it the Holy Sword? Tren used his elbow to gently nudge Li Jing and teased. That's because my sword is a precious sword. Uh-huh, backquote Omega. The imperial officials are given official uniforms and swords. Li Jing replied with a proud look on his face. Chapter 31 Dasky's Misunderstanding. Advertise here. Damn, I actually forgot that Li Jing was an official in, 10 colds. Looking at Li Jing's proud look, Tren curled his lips. But thinking of Dasky's mood swings just now because of seeing the new sword, Tren coughed a few times. Ahem, Li Jing's sword is pretty good, but it's still a bit lacking. After saying that, Tren shook his body, intentionally or unintentionally showing off the gambler on his waist. Huh. After Dasky handed the sword back to Li Jing, he naturally noticed the gamble on Tren's waist. Mr. Tren, is this your sword? 
Ah, that's right, it's true. Tren nodded pretending not to care, what? Do you want to see it? Is it okay? As a fan of this field, Dasky will certainly be interested. But Tren is different from Li Jing. Tren is the leader of the adventure group and has a different identity from Li Jing's deputy, so Dasky has not taken the initiative to speak out because he is afraid of making Tren unhappy. I'm the most kind person, just look at it. Tren handed over, gambling, without hesitation with one hand, and Dasky also took it and looked at the dark knife. His face looked heavy for a moment, and then he took it out of the sheath. This time, Dasky's face became more solemn, and he looked at Tren from time to time, just like this between, gambling, and Tren's face. Up, look back and forth. Although it's a gift, it's also something provided by the system. It's normal to have this kind of expression. Seeing this, Terran couldn't help shaking his head and laughing. On the other side, Dasky looked at Tren's, wry smile, and pursed her lips. Has Mr. Terran been deceived? How can such, such an ordinary sword be worthy of his identity? No. Thinking of this, Dasky thought of Li Jing's sword again. There was a sigh in my heart. Could it be that Mr. Tren is doing it for his adventure partners? That's right. Mr. Tren is such a gentle and kind person. He must be the kind of person who would rather give the best to his companions. Open black lens bracket summon 90% close black lens bracket. Sure enough, it provides emotions. It seems that what the system provides is still good. Seeing the system increase by another 5%, Tren was secretly happy. Da Si Chi, if you want, I can also record it for you with my knife. The name of this knife is Gamble, Tren smiled and raised his head to signal Dushichi to do whatever he wanted. Looking at Tren, Dasky couldn't help but feel a sense of admiration in her heart, Mr. Tren must have known about it all along, so he deliberately pretended to be particularly good at weapons in front of his companions to prevent Li Jing from feeling guilty. I really, cried to death, is this a real adventure group? It is indeed different from the evil pirates. Quote. Tren. Dasky stared at his famous sword illustration, then looked at the mediocre, Gamble, in his hand, gritted his teeth, and finally decided to tell a white lie. Mr. Terran, your gamble is unparalleled. I think even the twelve skills of the Supreme Sharp Sword cannot compare with it. Because this is your sincere heart for your partners. Dasky didn't say half of the sentence, she just said it silently in her heart. After saying that, Dasky took the initiative to turn to the last page of his little notebook and separately recorded the gambling delusion that would become famous all over the world with Tren in the future. At the same time, Dasky's famous Sword Illustrated book has become the only recorded book of gambling. After Dasky finished recording, she originally wanted to continue taking Tren and the two around, but the phone in her pocket that was exclusively provided to her by Smoker started buzzing. It turns out that Smoker captured a group of pirates and needed Dasky to make some records, which was the job of an adjutant. After all, Smoker is a big boss and can catch pirates, but he still needs an adjutant to do this job, otherwise the headquarters will not send Dasky to this direct descendant. So after answering the phone, Dasky apologized frantically to Tren like a disturbed rabbit, and then trotted away, just like when she came to find them in the first place. He's really a reckless guy. Terran looked at Dasky who accidentally bumped into several passers-by in one breath, raised the corner of his mouth and smiled. He is indeed an interesting junior. Li Jing also agreed. Forget it. After wandering around for so long, let's find a pub and sit down. Tren retracted his gaze and walked forward. Then I want to drink something sweet. Rum doesn't taste good. Then you might as well just have a drink. This is different. Captain Tren. The ordinary tavern in Roger Town. I chose this tavern because its door is right where One Piece Roger was executed. Even though many years have passed, many people have always come to this place to watch, our pirates passing through Rog Town will come to see the death point of this king. One Piece. Looking at the old high platform, Tren's eyes darkened slightly. He started an era with his own life. This guy really has something. But it's just a little something. The deepest impression of Tren on One Piece comes from the, mother, named Rouge. Looking at Tren, Li Jing breathed a deep sigh of relief, that's why everyone will always follow you. Captain Tren. I went in to drink. There's nothing to see. Tren turned around and walked towards the tavern. The layout of the tavern in Rog Town is the same as that of most taverns. What's special is that the moment Tren and the two entered, there were at least a few. Yu Sandow stared at them like hungry wolves. Is this the guy who killed Sharktooth Shrike? These two don't look strong either. Hey, have you seen that luxurious ship in the harbor? It belongs to him. I'm obviously not a pirate, but I own such a big ship. Isn't it a little unworthy? Oh. What do 20 million shrikes count? Most pirates from the other three seas did not take the shark tooth shrikes of the East China Sea seriously at all, because the level of pirates in the East China Sea is indeed weak, although they are strong. However, a little qualitative change cannot change the quantity. Captain Tren, Li Jing, who felt the killing intent, silently placed his hand on the hilt of the sword. Ignore them. For passers-by who have nothing to do with the progress of his harvest, Tren doesn't treat them as human beings. He can't bark like a dog, and you still want to call him back, right? Except that dog is looking for death and wants to bite. People. Yeah. Seeing Tren wave his hand, Li Jing also sat down beside him. Please pour two glasses of sweet wine. 
Tren snapped his fingers at the bar owner. Li Jing likes to drink, and Tren will definitely satisfy him. Besides, after wandering around for so long, Tren himself also wants to drink something sweet. It turns out that the guy who killed Sharktooth Shrike was a sissy who liked to drink sweet wine. At this time, a burly man came over and said loudly, I heard that you just killed the Sharktooth Shrike. Lousy would like to see how capable you are. Tren glanced at him and said coldly, If you don't want to die, get out of here. Do you know who I am? After hearing this, the big man became furious and raised his fist to hit Tren. However, his movement stopped in midair because a sword was pressed against his throat. Li Jing was holding wine in one hand and a sword in the other, looking at him expressionlessly, with a hint of chill in his eyes. So fast. When did this guy draw his sword? The big man swallowed and his face turned pale. He slowly put down his fists and returned to his seat dejectedly. When the people around him saw this scene, they couldn't help but take a breath, and no one dared to come forward to provoke him. Tren and Li Jing continued to drink and chat as if nothing was wrong. Chapter 32 Plan Advertise here. The tavern was crowded, it could be said that the seats were packed, and wherever you looked, they were all pirates. Therefore, when the big man was frightened and retreated, the eyes of the people around him became more obvious. Obviously, the big man really didn't have the shame to stay in this tavern where he was embarrassed, so after throwing out a few baileys as drink money, he hurriedly left in disgrace. Actually, the sweet wine is pretty good too. Tren took a few sips of the sweet wine and raised his eyebrows. At first, he thought that this kind of liqueur would be like a modern cocktail. However, the liqueur in the pirate world was more like fruit wine, which was completely different from the industrial flavored wine he had drunk before. Is this the smell of nature? Tren sighed secretly in his heart. It has to be, this is much better than what I drank in the past. Li Jing also nodded in agreement. After all, the brewing skills of the Shang dynasty were indeed inferior. How about we buy some and take them back to the boat when we go back later? Tren suggested. Well, it's a good idea. Li Jing agreed. Tren and Li Jing chatted without a word, but the pirates in the tavern did not seem to be frightened by the act of killing a chicken to scare the monkeys. At the same time, at a table in the lower left corner of the tavern, three captains of pirate groups sat together. They were from West Blue's Tekken Pirates, Polka Dot Pirates, and North Blue's Sands Pirates. The three captains all used their real names on their wanted notices. The reason is that in the sea area where they are located, they have not yet made their own names. Instead, they rely on their numbers. You must have seen those two guys' boats, right? Tekken said with a smile, wearing a cloth scarf on his head. It's indeed luxurious and huge. I rarely see ships like this in North Blue. Captain Jinsha put a pair of hammers at his feet and raised his eyes in response. What? You two want to set up a trap? Polkadot, who looked slightly wretched and gloomy, looked at the two people, but their eyes were more on Tekken. After all, he was the one who organized the dinner. In the world of pirates, it is normal for pirates to cooperate with each other, especially when the benefits are large enough. Now these three guys have clearly set their sights on Tren's black pearl, with greed shining in their eyes. What else? Tekken took a sip of wine and said in a low voice, I saw it when I was at the port early in the morning, and that guy was not a pirate. Oh, he's not a pirate. Jinsha and Polkadot looked at each other with surprised expressions. Obviously, they didn't know what happened to Trent in the harbor. Turkin put down his wine glass, frowned and said, I saw him talking to Smoker at the time. He looked like an ordinary guy. If he was a pirate, Smoker would not have let his ship park in the harbor. You know we all the ships. Jin Sha touched his chin, stared at the person at the bar, thinking for a moment and said, if this is the case, this cooperation is a good deal. No matter he is a pirate, a businessman, or something else, having such a big ship is enough to prove that there are a lot of good things on board. Polka Dot shook his head and retorted, but the problem is, that's the harbor, how do we do it? We are no match for Smoker, even if there are two of them. They are not two people. Tekken was silent for a while and said slowly, after they left, I sent someone to try to get into the ship, but... What's the result? Basically no one can get closer than 10 meters to the ship. The men I sent were all shot into the neck or forehead with a tiny poisonous needle and died. The guy was like a ghost. Seeing the fear in Tekken's pupils when he told this story, the other two people frowned. No wonder Tekken would look for them. Then what are we going to do next? Jinsha asked. Polka Dot echoed. Well, it's a bit difficult to get close to the harbor in advance, and you can't gather your men at the harbor. The three of them fell into deep thought and began to think about how to deal with potential threats. After a moment, Tekken was the first to speak, if our three pirate groups get together to launch an attack, even the smoker won't be able to support him in time, right? What do you mean? Jinsha and Polka Dot turned their eyes to Tekken. Ha ha, Tekken sneered, there are many pirates in your pirate group, Polka Dot. If you start making trouble on the opposite street first, do you think smoker will go over and deal with it? It will definitely happen, that guy won't hesitate to catch pirates. Polka Dot already knew what Tekken was going to do. That's it, we will set the time to attack when they leave the port. At that time, Smoker will be attracted by Dot's men, and then the three-person pirate ship will set sail together and attack at the same time. He will not be able to deal with it at all. 
No, you want me to give up my partner. Thinking of the men who were still attracting the smoker, Polka Dot patted the table. Polka, everyone knows who you are. No, that's my most loyal partner who shares wheel and woe. Polka Dot gritted his teeth. Both of us will give you 10% when the time comes. Tekken said, while Jinsha nodded. Really, Polka Dot's eyes narrowed slightly, he wanted to eat them all by himself. Otherwise, is there still a lie? The two of them smiled slightly, and only they knew the meaning in their eyes. 10%, don't be kidding, it will be good if they don't swallow the polka dots by then. In this way, a plan with mutual cooperation and different ideas was born, and it was not far behind Tren. At this time, Tren and Li Jing did not notice this at all, or in other words, they were not worried that such a thing would happen. Let's go to each supply store to buy some things, and then return to the ship. Tren is no longer interested in Rog Town. Anyway, he has absorbed enough of his spiritual emotions. However, since we will enter the Grand Line next, it is better to buy some food supplies on the ship. That's okay. I heard from Captain Tren, but I don't know if that guy Timo has anything to buy. Li Jing nodded, then took out Bailey and placed it on the bar, then stood up slowly. Timo. Tron thought of Timo's appearance as a fully armed special forces soldier, frowned, and then smiled wretchedly. How about we buy him some cute clothes? Uh-huh. Tren said and raised his eyebrows in a particularly wicked way. Oh ha ha. Li Jing suddenly realized, Captain Tren, you are so evil. What are you talking about? As the leader of the regiment, of course I have to be responsible for my regiment members. How can I let my regiment members be fully armed every day? That makes sense. Ha ha ha. Li Jing chuckled, and then the two of them left the tavern and walked towards the lively streets. Chapter 33 Surrounded. Advertise here. Marine base. Office. Smoker, who had finished dealing with another wave of pirates, sat on his chair with interest, still smoking a cigarette and staring at Dasky. How? Their identities. Looking at Smoker. Dasky did not answer immediately, but walked towards the window, opened it and felt the fresh air. Mr. Tren, they are different from pirates. Thinking of the expressions on Tren and Li Jing's faces when they were wandering on the street, Dasky couldn't associate them with the vicious pirates. Based on what judgment, Smoker exhaled a puff of smoke calmly, you must also be curious about why I am chasing a guy who doesn't have a wanted warrant, right? Yeah, seeing Smoker speak, Dasky was unambiguous and nodded. Mr. Tehran and the others are true adventurers. As Colonel Smoker's adjutant, I really can't understand your thoughts. You should not be taught by Teacher Zephyr, right? Dasky. I am in the 1176th period. Teacher Zephyr has stopped taking students, so I am trained by Lieutenant General Guillaume. It turns out to be Guillaume. Smoker thought of a woman with a mole on the corner of her mouth, and covered her face, has this guy started teaching students? So, Colonel Smoker, why are you? Because the same thing happened to Roger back then. In the name of adventure, he was actually a pirate. Smoker looked heavy, and Tren's face appeared in his mind. However, adventurers do exist, but I want to extinguish the flames of evil. No wonder, it turns out that Colonel Smoker wants to avenge himself. Dasky pouted and murmured. What, am I that kind of person? Am I such a small-minded person? Smoker yelled. It doesn't matter if Jenny Tren denounces me in public or says that my smoking harms others. I, Smoker, am not the kind of guy who seeks public revenge. Hey, seeing Smoker's righteous expression, Dasky curled her lips deliberately, actually, I found that Mr. Terran is still a bit arrogant. Bang, Smoker stood up instantly and put on his coat, I knew it, Jenny Tren, your tail is still exposed. Ha ha ha, let's go, arrest someone. I'm not talking about pirates. I just think Mr. Tron may be allergic to seafood. Colonel Smoker. Uh, Smoker froze in place for a moment. Actually, Mr. Tren has been here not long, and the application for their ship to pass through the Grand Line has been submitted. Because Tren is not a pirate, the transition needs to be submitted in the same way as a merchant ship. Don't ask. Asking is legal and compliant. Why is this guy's application written so well? Smoker looked at the documents in his hand and fell into deep thought. Could it be that this guy is a child of some kingdom's nobles? Timo. Yordles are also nobles. What's wrong with being able to write an application? Do you know where the protection law for Yordles comes from? After hesitating for a moment, faced with this flawless application, Smoker had no reason to refuse, so he signed his name. It seems that Colonel Smoker still understands. Dasky smiled and accepted the document. Alas, Smoker sighed, I always thought it wouldn't be that simple. Although I'm not a woman, my sixth sense is still very strong. On the other side, at the harbor, Terran smiled as he looked at the supplies being transported from the conveyor belt to the Black Pearl one by one. He and Li Jing did not bring a lot of money with them when they went out, so they asked the store owner to bring everything to the harbor, and then handed over the money with one hand and the other with the other. Goods. Thank you. Everyone, as the last supply was delivered to the ship, a box was also sent out from the Black Pearl in the opposite direction. Li Jing took the box and opened it gently. In an instant, the baileys full of them shone with dazzling light, as well as the gold coins and so on. This was just a box of Aaron's treasure. This is your money. After Li Jing divided the money, he sent the box back, and at the same time, the conveyor belt was slowly put away. 
See, there will definitely be a lot of treasure on this ship. Tekken said, hiding not far away. Indeed. Jinsha and Bodian looked at this scene and nodded. They are ready to set sail now. Let's get ready too. No problem. The three pirate captains left one after another. Immediately afterwards, dozens of pirates from the polka dot pirates in a neighborhood suddenly attacked the patrolling marine, triggering a riot. Smoker also went to support him as they planned. If the plan goes like this, there will definitely be no problem. However, these three pirates obviously underestimated Smoker's strength. No matter how bad Smoker is, he is still a Lodia fruit user, and he is not a little pirate at all. What can be resisted? So in less than a minute, Smoker killed all the pirates of the dot pirates. For guys like this who are not leaders of the pirate group, there is no prison for them. Wait, a pirate saw that he was about to be submerged in the white mist. In fear of death, he told his captain's plan. These three guys are really. Smoker chewed his cigarette, then handed over the aftermath to his subordinates, and rode his motorcycle to the harbor. He didn't know the strength of Tren and others, but they were attacked by three big pirate groups, and they probably wouldn't be much better. The most important thing is that this guy Terran may be a noble of the kingdom under the world government. Although I don't know whether it is true or not, but no matter how bad he is, he can't watch a civilian being attacked on his own territory. In the harbor, Terran and Li Jing have returned to the Black Pearl. At the same time, the ship begins to sail out of the harbor. Open black lens bracket summon 100% close black lens bracket. Full, looking at the summon button that flashed again, Tren became excited, so under Tren's instruction, the three people on board each opened a bottle of liqueur. Timo, Captain, I bought some clothes for you. Tron looked at Timo and smiled slightly. He was in a good mood now and was going to find a good place and then call his friends. Nice looking clothes. Li Jingduo looked like a wretched uncle. Captain Tren, the scout's clothing is very important. Timo Kaido. Ha ha ha. You can wear it when you have nothing to do. We don't get into fights every day. As soon as Tren finished speaking, the moving black pearl stopped. Captain, something bad has happened. We are surrounded. Xiao He, the boat elf, rushed out quickly. Huh. After hearing this, the three of them noticed that the Black Pearl was surrounded by three pirate ships. Tisk, 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 isn't this the guy who killed the, shark tooth, shrike? Tekken stood on the pirate ship, holding a musket in his hand, with a very arrogant expression. Don't look at it, our three pirate groups together have hundreds of people. Jinsha laughed. You'd better just jump into the sea by yourself, maybe we can spare your life. I made a mistake, Captain. Looking at the three arrogant guys, Timo looked gloomy. It was his fault for not observing in advance. It's okay. I don't blame you. It was me who asked you to come down and drink. Tren smiled slightly. Besides, they were prepared in advance at first sight. You just happened to meet the gap by chance. I can kill them all, but their shells have been aimed at the Black Pearl. I'm worried about accidentally damaging the ship. Li Jing said calmly. As this so, Tren doesn't want to see his Black Pearl damaged, because it's not clear whether people in this world can repair this ship. Timo is a sniper and is now exposed. He has no chance to arrange mushrooms in advance, so he is a single target. Li Jing is also strong in swordsmanship, but he is also a single target. He can cut off three pirate ships with his sword energy, but it will definitely damage the Black Pearl. Because the two sides are too close. This is the only way, maybe it's God's will. After a moment of silence, Tren silently used the opportunity of the third summons. I hope this time it goes as I want. Let's do a group injury. Chapter 34 Cursed Killing, Sadako. Advertise here. Chapter 34. The Third Person. The curse that kills all existences, the fear in the heart from the abyss, the ghost of resentment, Sadako. At this time, the Black Pearl had already traveled hundreds of nautical miles away from Rogue Town, so when Smoker drove his motorcycle to the harbor, he couldn't help but sigh heavily. It's still too late. How could? Looking at the Black Pearl surrounded by three pirate ships on the sea, Dasky subconsciously covered her mouth. Colonel Smoker, we, three pirate groups, we need at least two warships, but one ship went out to patrol the sea area from the base. Now only one is still parked in the base harbor, and this kind of action needs to be reported. Smoker's face was heavy, like lead block-like, staring closely at the scene ahead. That means, he needs to be on his own. Returning to the Black Pearl, the three captains of the pirate group looked so arrogant that they almost reached the sky. Have you decided, I don't have time to spend with you? Bodian put his foot on the bow of the boat, his tone as irritable as an angry cat. Why don't we just fight it? Kids, get ready to board the ship, Jinsha held two hammers high above his head, like a warrior preparing to charge. Isn't it good to be honest? The corner of Tekken's mouth rose, and at the same time his pirates became restless. Once this kind of three-party cooperation boarded the ship, they had to rely on their own ability to steal as much as they could. Oh, you can try it. Li Jing drew his sword and the sword light flickered, whoever steps aboard the boat will die. Three of you, which one of you wants to die first? Timo also squinted his eyes, and the infrared ray of the sniper rifle in his hand glanced back and forth on the foreheads of the three captains, like a hungry lion majesty. 
Although he didn't have time to arrange mushrooms, he was not short of gas grenades and the like, and he could guarantee that these three pirate captains would die ugly. Wait, Tekken was horrified when he saw this, so he quickly raised his hand to stop him. Let's just baptize with gunfire first. What we want is treasure anyway, so forget about this ship. Jinsha grinned, showing a sly smile. Yes, it's safe this way. Bodian agreed, and the guns of the three pirate ships slightly adjusted. It seems that more people are great. At this time, Tren, who had been silent for a long time, slowly spoke. He looked around the three pirate groups with a hint of contempt in his eyes. If there weren't many people, we wouldn't dare to find you. Tekken faced Tren directly and responded without any sign of weakness. As that's so, Tren chuckled in a low voice, with a hint of sarcasm in his voice, but there seems to be something wrong with your people. Huh. After listening to Tren's words, the faces of the three captains instantly turned gloomy. They stared at Tren closely, sparks of anger flashing in their eyes, what do you mean by this? That's just the literal meaning. As soon as Tren finished speaking, the originally cheerful crew members on the Tekken pirate's ship suddenly knelt on the deck in pain, their faces green, as if they had seen some extremely terrifying scene, and they kept mumbling, don't, don't. After a while, the pirate began to bleed from all his orifices, and his pupils turned blood black, as if he was possessed by a devil. Hey, what's wrong with you? The companion next to him looked at this scene and was about to step forward to offer condolences, but his expression also changed, and then he pinched his neck crazily until he died. For a time, this happened to the members of the three pirate groups. The unified performance was that the black and white pupils were filled with blood black first, as if being swallowed by darkness. Ah, Captain Sands, help me. Captain Turkin. No, it's not me, no, ah, asshole. The three captains looked at this scene, their expressions became extremely panicked, their eyes fixed on the smiling Tren, as if they were about to spit out fire, what did you do to my crew members? It's really scary to kill with a curse. Tren ignored these three guys because they were fast. Asshole. I'm asking you a question. Tekken shouted. Just as he was about to make a move, suddenly his pupils began to turn black. Quote. No. No. Tekken knew what happened to his men just now, so after feeling something was wrong, he rubbed his eyes crazily. Fear magnified infinitely in Tekken's heart like a tide. He stared at his blood black eyes and shouted at the golden sands and polka dots. You two hurry up and find a solution. Tekken. Your eyes. The two of them looked at Tekken's eyes that had become hollow. They both subconsciously took a half step back and swallowed. My eyes, my eyes, no, Tekken raised his hand and touched it, and found that his eyeballs no longer had eyeballs, and his hands only touched the hollows. I, no, you can't, from here, Tekken suddenly opened his mouth to the sky, his neck twisted in a strange way, and finally his feet softened and he knelt on the spot. Immediately afterwards, a black ghost-like particle floated out of the empty eye frame, and the same happened with other dead pirates. A trace of black particles floated up into the sky, slowly gathered together, and finally surrounded Tren's neck. And it began to take shape slowly, and finally a woman with her face covered by long black hair and wearing a white dress appeared. She leaned against Tren, holding Tren's neck tightly with both hands, and resting her head on Tren's right shoulder, but Tren couldn't feel any weight. Captain, Sadako's tone was very ethereal. Welcome back, Sadako. The corner of Tren's mouth raised. This was the partner he summoned for the third time. Name, Sadako, from the movie Sadako. Ability, Curse to kill, no matter how strong or weak the target is, once the psychological defense is low, Sadako has the ability to curse to kill it. Strength. Ignore any attacks, Sadako is in a state of nothingness, she can touch any object briefly, but others cannot touch her except Tren. I've been waiting for the leader for a long time, Sadako said softly. So I came to pick you up. Feeling the ghost-shaped air conditioner, Tren Kaido. Thank you, Sister Jen. Li Jing nodded slightly to Junzi, then drew his sword and shot up like lightning. He walked through the air with a single arrow and soared into the sky. Everyone, it should be quiet at this moment. Li Jing narrowed his eyes slightly, with a cold light flashing in his eyes. The long sword in his hand instantly slashed out several fierce sword energies. In an instant, even the vast sea surface was it was cut abruptly by this terrifying sword energy, and a smooth mirror-like incision was briefly formed. The three arrogant and domineering pirate ships were even more vulnerable to a blow. In front of this shocking sword energy, they were like fragile paper. They were split in half vertically in the middle and completely collapsed. Solution broken. Bang. Li Jing was very angry with the sword, so the sword energy extended all the way to the harbor of Roge Town, leaving a sword mark from the harbor to the wall of a house. It was like someone was trying to cut Rog Town in two. HMPH. Li Jing snorted coldly as he returned to the Black Pearl. I didn't expect to meet Sister Jen here. Timo also said hello to Junzi on Tren's back. Timo. Long time no see. Sadako turned her head slightly, unable to see her expression clearly because her long black hair covered everything. Especially when I thought a TV would fall from the sky and you crawl out of it. Terran smiled. Captain, that's out of date. I stopped doing that a long time ago. Sadako's tone changed slightly, and she seemed to be complaining. So now you have emerged from human eyes. 
Television is a tool for people to see the outside world, but aren't the eyes also the windows for people to understand the outside world? So why can't I get out? Sadako turned her covered head and stared at Terran. Haha, that makes sense. Chapter 35 Sadako is cute too. Advertise here. Rog Town, Harbor Mouth. Smoker's eyes were dull for no other reason than that Li Jing's terrifying slash was just a hair away from him. Colonel Smoker. Dasky reacted first and shouted. Hearing Dasky's voice, Smoker came back to his senses. He looked down and saw that the leather shoe on his right foot was slightly broken due to the sword energy, and his little finger was exposed. This. Smoker turned around instantly, but fortunately, I don't know if it was luck or Li Jing's timing. The sword attack that spread to the harbor of Rog Town did not hurt anyone, except for Smoker's leather shoes. Swordsman. No, only that guy Mahawk can do this kind of strength, right? Mr. Terran. They, are so strong. Dasky pursed her lips as she looked at the Black Pearl, which had defeated three pirate groups and was drifting away. Damn it. A burst of white mist suddenly erupted around Smoker. Colonel Smoker. Smoker's eyes were like those of a hawk, staring at the Black Pearl. Finally, he spit out the cigarette butt in his mouth and said in a deep voice, the situation on this sea is about to change again. Da Si Chi. Here. Dasky looked serious when she heard Smoker calling her name. Did you see what happened just now? Saw it. Then report it truthfully. You can write the documents and I'll sign them when they're done. Smoker rarely lit up two cigarettes and smoked them together. The smoke swirled around him like two white dragons. But. Dasky hesitated. But what? Smoker turned back to stare at him, his eyebrows slightly furrowed. Mr. Terran and the others are not pirates. They were also people who were invaded by pirates just now. Dasky raised his eyes and said with an unusually serious expression. Seeing Dasky's stubborn look, Smoker stepped forward, raised his hand, gently pressed her head, took a deep breath of cigarette, and said slowly, the world government will not allow this kind of possession. A strong person is an adventurer honestly. Because on this sea, freedom is inseparable from pirates. Dot 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 dot. One day later, on the calm sea, a large, low-key and luxurious ship was slowly moving forward. The addition of Sadako made the Tren Adventure group lively again. At this moment, on the spacious deck, Terran, Li Jing and Sadako were sitting together, each holding a few playing cards in their hands. The boat elf Xiao Hei on the side was busy handing them various snacks and drinks. Occasionally, he would lie down next to Sadako, tapping his little feet, holding his cheeks and watching the three of them play cards with relish. Chu, and on the high observation tower, Timo still stayed there quietly. His eyes were staring at the calm sea, with an open bag of snacks beside him. The breeze blew gently, bringing a bit of coolness, and at the same time blowing the fluff on his outer ears. Oh, by the way, this time there is one more summoning gift than before. The promise is to give Tren the power of self-healing and a complete set of modern entertainment facilities, such as Mahjong, Poker, Monopoly, etc. Needless to say, the power of self-healing has been integrated into Tren's body. As for the entertainment facilities, they were placed inside the Black Pearl, adding more functions and fun to it. A pair of aces, I can't afford it. Looking at the card Sadako played, Terran decided not to give up. A pair of aces, Li Jing frowned, stared at the single cards in his hand, the biggest one was preserved eggs, and finally sighed. Sister Sadako's A is really strong. Haha, <laughs> Li Jing is right. Tren smiled. Why are you laughing? Captain, Sadako turned her head and looked at Terran, I'm going to win. Of course I'm talking about cards. Terran subconsciously stared at the cards in his hand. Uh, that's not right. Seeing Tren's fleeting expression, Sadako's face pouted under her covered hair. Ah, is there something wrong? I really can't afford it. As that's so, Sadako frowned and looked down at her cards. Of course, this is for A. Listening to Terran's words, Sadako didn't think much about it at first, but the moment she looked at the cards, she stared at her chest. Because she was wearing an exaggerated white dress, it was indeed easy to spot the pair of aces. Captain. Sadako's face suddenly became shy, like a ripe apple, but others could not see it. Looking at Sadako's long black hair covering her face, Tren, who was more or less curious, subconsciously raised his hand, because he was the only one who could touch Sadako. Just like that, while Sadako lowered her head, Tren lifted up her long hair, revealing half of her face. It was a beautiful face, with slightly wrinkled eyebrows and half-drowned eyelids, but her faint smile could still be seen. Blue pupils. Sadako's face was as white as mud and fat white jade, very white, wrongly white. But at this moment, for some unknown reason, a blush appeared on her cheeks. Perhaps it had been dark for a long time, and she suddenly felt the light. Sadako raised her lowered head and looked sideways towards the light source. As a result, she saw Tren's face with a faint smile staring at her, as if he wanted to see through her. It's not ugly. Why do you have to cover it up? Captain Tren. Looking at Tren's clear eyes, Sadako subconsciously stepped back, her eyes dodging left and right. Haha. Ha. Seeing Sadako's fearful look, Terran found it cute. You're still laughing. Sadako stared at Terran and said in a delicate tone, I will definitely curse you to death. I must definitely curse you to death. Sadako is reluctant to let go. Tren responded with a chuckle. 
You know again, Captain. Sadako stared at Tren with a complaining face. Of course, there was a guy with even greater resentment. Li Jingzheng, who stared back and forth at Tren and Sadako. So you two, are you ready to play your cards? Go, of course. Ha ha. Tren scratched his head and then played a card. Sadako also sat back down, but her long, shiny black hair was covered again by her face. That's right. Li Jing licked his lips. He still liked the game landlords very much. Of course, it would be better if he could play Mahjong. It's a pity that Timo never plays with him, resulting in the inability to gather enough people. Xiao Hei, are we on the grand line now? Taking advantage of the gap between playing cards, Tren gently tapped his finger and asked the little head of the ship elf Xiao Hei who was lying aside. Hum. Xiao Hei shook his head and replied with a sweet voice. From the chart, we haven't completely entered the grand line yet, but we are almost there. It is probably only a few dozen nautical miles. Quote. So that's it. Tren nodded thoughtfully, indicating that he understood. Chapter 36 The Sudden Appearance of the Golden Lion Advertise here. Today was supposed to be a peaceful day, but when you think everything is fine, something will definitely happen. Just as the Black Pearl was about to enter the first half of the Great Line, a giant shadow that covered the sky and sun appeared on the Black Pearl, completely blocking the sun. What is this? On the observation deck, Timo looked at the giant thing in the sky and frowned. There was no need to remind him, because everyone had seen this giant thing. Is that a ship? Li Jing swallowed hard. Otherwise, that thing in the sky was several times bigger than the Black Pearl. It's a ship. Sadako nodded, with a hint of solemnity in her eyes. But Terran's face was gloomy. It was a big ship, to be precise, it was more like a ship transformed from a hill. There are neat rows of rows of oars on both sides of the ship, and the bow is a huge, shining golden lion's head. This guy, I remember, isn't it supposed to be in the East China Sea? Why does it appear here? And this is just when we are about to enter the first half of the Grand Line. Tren's voice was full of doubts and worries. The pirate ship in the sky easily surpassed the Black Pearl, but the other party stopped firmly in front and stopped moving forward. Because he raised his eyes to look up at the sky, Tren could not see clearly the dazzling sunlight and had to raise his hands to block it. The moment Tren raised his hand to block the light, he saw clearly. The guy standing in front of the sun, with long blonde hair, a rudder stuck behind his head, wearing a light and dark yellow striped samurai uniform, with his feet standing on swords. Seeing this, Tren's eyebrows furrowed even more, and his tone was low. Captain of the Sky Pirates, Golden Lion Shaki. I found you, little guy. Shaki stared at Tren in front of him, with the corners of his mouth slightly raised, revealing a sly smile. He held a cigar in his mouth, and the smoke revealed a strong confidence. Let me test your strength in person. You must have some ability to fight with that red-haired kid. After all, I felt Roger's aura in you at that time. As soon as Shaki finished speaking, he suddenly turned over, his body moving as fast as lightning. His pair of prosthetic legs that replaced his feet, Ying Ju, and Dead Tree, waved in the air, drawing a sharp arc. Following his movements, a powerful force gathered at the tip of the sword blade, forming two shockingly powerful cuts. Chop. Along with Shiki's roar, two powerful chops hit the Black Pearl like lightning. They carried unparalleled power, as if they were going to tear the entire Black Pearl in half. Whoops. At this critical moment, Li Jing appeared like a ghost. His speed was staggering. In the blink of an eye, he drew out the long sword in his hand and rushed forward to meet the two slashes. If you want the leader to take action, you have to go through Li and me first. Li Jing's voice was cold and firm, revealing an unflinching determination. The long sword in his hand was flashing with cold light, and the blade trembled rapidly in the air, making a crisp buzzing sound. Li Jing's figure turned into a phantom and faced off against the two slashes. In an instant, sword light and slashes intertwined, erupting with a burst of dazzling light and loud sound. For a moment, the entire deck of the Black Pearl was enveloped in sword energy and shock waves, and the surrounding sea made waves and gave way. Swordsman, not stronger than swordsman. Looking at Li Jing who broke up his attack, Shaki looked at Tren without any contempt in his eyes. Because this guy didn't show a trace of fear on his face, as if he knew very well that he couldn't hurt him. Ha 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 ha. Seeing this, Shaki laughed, in that case, let me try this guy's swordsmanship. You must know that the Golden Lion used to be a swordsman. Although losing his legs may have reduced his swordsmanship, he is a Golden Lion. Don't worry, I don't use devil fruit powers. I saw Shaki rushing directly towards Li Jing, raising his left leg, Sakura 10, with an armed color, and slashed it down directly. Bang! The powerful impact directly exploded a short open space on the sea surface. But unlike what Shaki thought, Li Jing gritted his teeth before taking the shot, because this guy blocked his, Sakura 10, with just two fingers. How is that possible? Because of the close distance, Shaki could see Li Jing clearly. He was a middle-aged man like him, probably about 10 years younger than him. In front of Li, any attack is useless. Li Jing slashed upward with his sword. Bang. Shaki didn't dare to neglect, turned around quickly, and tried his best to parry with the, deadwood, sword. There was only a loud sound as the two swords intersected and countless sparks burst out. Shaki took advantage of the situation and knocked Li Jing's sword away. 
Then he turned over and used the twin swords of Ying Ju and Deadwood on his feet to kill again. Li Jing, on the other hand, still held the sword tightly with one hand, calm and relaxed, and even performed a move for the golden lion, catching the sword with his bare hands 100%. It can be said that he received all the attacks from the golden lion. This guy, Shaki, who was once again perfectly caught by Li Jing, looked serious. I'm afraid Roger won't be able to break through his defense. Cut. Li Jing sideways dodged Shiki's attack, and then with a flick of his wrist, the sword drew an arc in the air and pierced Shiki's throat. Shiki dodged and avoided Li Jing's attack. At the same time, he waved his swords and launched a counterattack. The two of them were going back and forth, and their sword moves became more and more fierce. Li Jing's swordsmanship was like flowing clouds and flowing water, both offensive and defensive. Shiki's double swords are very domineering. Even when using Ba Tang, Every strike contains huge power, but he is at a disadvantage because his attacks can never be effective. Supplement. The setting of the Golden Lion book is not weak, there is a general level, and the three-color domineering is also Grandmaster. Can Ba Tang be easily defended? I'm telling you, any attack is useless in front of me. This is the concept. Suddenly, Li Jing turned his sword and opened Shiki's, dead wood, sword, and then kicked Shiki on the chest. Shiki took a few steps back, and after steadying himself, his eyes became more fierce. Not bad. Kid, if you don't use the power of the devil fruit, I'm no match for you, but you can't kill me either. Shiki wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and did not rush forward again. With this kind of strength, you must be a strong man of the same era as me, right? Why have I never heard of your name on the sea? There is nothing wrong with Shiki's words. After all, Li Jing's age is there. If calculated according to the timeline of One Piece, Li Jing is indeed in the same era as Golden Lion, White Beard, and Roger. Looking at the Golden Lion floating in the air, Li Jing fell back to the bow of the Black Pearl holding a sword one position behind Tren, and at the same time showed everyone his status in the adventure group. Because you so-called strong men are nothing in front of Captain Tren. Chapter 37 Join me, Jenny Tren. Advertise here. Seeing Li Jing's determined expression as if he was invincible, Shiki began to trust Tren's strength even more. In fact, the fact that he controlled the ship to look for Tren was not an accidental encounter, but a long-planned plan. A few months ago, when Shiki was wandering aimlessly in the East China Sea, the originally calm sky suddenly became turbulent, accompanied by an extremely powerful and frightening momentum. This kind of momentum will never be forgotten by Shiki, because it is exactly the same as his old enemy Roger, even more powerful. So, he rushed towards the battle site without hesitation, but unfortunately, by the time he arrived, Tren had already left. However, Shiki did not give up. He deliberately found the red-haired man who was about to leave Donghai. Under the pretext of checking the, new era strength, he finally succeeded in getting some news about Tren. Since then, he has been driving his ship and looking for Tren's whereabouts. To have such a powerful guy, I respect you as my lord, you are indeed the person I'm looking for, ha 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 ha. Shiki was not angry when he heard Li Jing's humiliating words. The premise is that you can defeat him first. Anyway, the strength Li Jing showed just now made him a little scared, especially when Shiki found that he couldn't break through Li Jing's defense. However, the most important thing is that he is a majestic golden lion, and every slash is caught with two fingers. Well, he still has some face. We're not familiar with each other, right? Shiki. Tren raised his eyes and stared at the golden lion floating in the sky, frowning. You don't know me, but I know you. Jenny Tren. Shiki still had that iconic smile. So, is this the reason why you attacked us for no reason? Tren's expression was slightly cold, with a trace of displeasure in his eyes. Oh, the corners of Shiki's mouth rose, as if he was a little surprised by Tren's reaction. However, when he saw Tren's expression, his smile gradually faded away slowly landed on the long pole on the bow of the Black Pearl. After standing still, he lowered his head and looked down at Terran. His tone became low and cold. Do you think you can still survive if I try my best? Before Shaki finished speaking, he suddenly felt a powerful killing intent. In the blink of an eye, Li Jing appeared next to him like a ghost holding a sharp sword, the tip of the sword already hovering around his neck. There is a vague aura attached to the sword, which seems to contain endless power. Li Jing's face was gloomy. He stared at Shaki and said calmly, do you think I can't kill you so-called ability users? At that moment, I felt the fear in your heart. At the same time, Sadako's figure appeared quietly behind the golden lion like a phantom. Her body was like fine grains of sand, with only her upper body visible. She stretched out her hands and placed them quietly on Shiki's shoulders. These guys. Shiki was startled and wanted to take action, but at this moment, a crisp sound came. It turned out that at some point, a poisonous target was shot at Shiki's feet. Be honest, this poison label is mixed with sea floor stone powder. It will be very uncomfortable if this thing enters your body. A cold voice sounded, warning Shaki not to act rashly. Is there anyone else? Shaki was secretly frightened. Hearing Timo's strange and heart-stopping voice, he became even more worried. When facing Li Jing and Sadako before, Shaki was still able to accurately grasp the source of their murderous intent with his own strength and insight. 
But he didn't know Timo's location at all, and he couldn't even detect it even with the release of his visceral color. This was the most terrifying thing. I didn't question your ability, Shaki. Tren looked at the Golden Lion and slowly took a few steps forward, seemingly not taking this legendary pirate seriously. But don't think too highly of yourself. As the distance between the two people narrowed, the tense atmosphere tightened like a bowstring, and a fierce conflict was about to break out. There is an unfathomable guy who was estimated to be the strongest, plus a swordsman with invincible defense and even more invincible offense, a woman with unknown abilities who was suspected of being an esper, and a sniper who still doesn't know where the other party is hiding. After pondering for a moment, Shaki decided that peace is the most important thing. After all, the sea is not about fighting and killing, but about humaneness. Well, that's it. Haha, <laughs> Terran, can I call you that? Shaki smiled and relaxed completely, telling the other three people on the boat that he had no intention of taking action. Whatever. Looking at Shiki's smile, Tran immediately understood that this guy was not going to fight anymore, so he whispered, it's okay. As soon as Tren finished speaking, Golden Lion felt that the killing intent locked on him dissipated like a tide. Li Jing sheathed his sword and leaned quietly against the sail, while nibbling on an apple. Sadako also floated back behind Tren like a ghost, and Timo also put away his gun, as if nothing happened just now. Shiki was not polite when he saw this. He sat down on the sail chair and said boldly, Jenny Tren, join me. Be my right-hand man, and let's rule the sea together. Hum. Don't you want to destroy the East China Sea? Tren heard the Golden Lion's words and didn't react for a while. Why destroy the East China Sea? Golden Lion was also confused. He might have this idea in the future, but not now. Come on. Don't ramble on. It'll be over if you answer or not. Shaki said straightforwardly. I just want to be an adventurer and find some members by the way. Tren said calmly, raising his eyes. It was obvious that Lousy was not a pirate. Adventurer. Stop joking. Terran. Shaki laughed as if he heard some joke. I'm not kidding. Well, Shaki suppressed his smile and stared at Tren like a hawk, as if he wanted to see something in his eyes, but when he looked around, there were only a pair of eyes as clear as water. Ha ha. After a moment, Shaki sneered, you can't be an adventurer, your destiny is to be a pirate. So confident. You know I don't even have a wanted warrant right now. The same goes for my team members. Tren picked up the sweet wine on the side and took a sip. This sea is bigger than you imagine. Shaki was about to say something, but then the boat elf Xiaohei came out like a ghost, bringing some food and wine with him. Then Shaki suddenly shouted nervously, Oh, Oni Chan. Quote dot 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 quote. Ha, so without saying a word, Tren raised his hand and slapped him, causing a loud and clear scream. Hum, the recovered golden lion blinked, Tren, how do you know the way I recover? I think anyone who sees an old man calling you, Oni Chan, like an idiot will give you a slap in the face. Tren shook his hand and said with satisfaction, but don't say it, it feels good. Shaki. Chapter 38 Uneasy and Kind-Hearted, Golden Lion. Advertise here. Shaki crossed his arms over his chest with a solemn expression. He was completely different from before. Not only did he no longer yell, but he lowered his voice and spoke. I'm serious, Jenny Tren. As long as you are willing to join us, I promise to make you the vice captain of the Sky Pirates. As for your companions, they can still follow you, how about that? Looking at the sincere face of the Golden Lion, if Tren didn't understand this ruthless and city-like nature, he might really be deceived by him. After all, Tren can more or less guess what the Golden Lion has in mind. Maybe he did come for me at first, but that was all. Especially just now, the powerful strength shown by Li Jing made the Golden Lion completely interested. But it is obviously impossible to poach someone, especially with the attitude shown by Li Jing. Ever since, Golden Lion thought of another strategy, to draw Tren into his pirate group. In this way, Li Jing and others will naturally join the Sky Pirates in order to follow Tren, and he will not lose the Golden Lion at all. Both Tren and his men are his. But force is obviously unrealistic, so he is going to use soft tactics. How about it? I am the legendary pirate Golden Lion. I am pleading in such a low voice, but ordinary people will never enjoy the treatment. I don't believe that a young man like you can really withstand this kind of temptation. Although Shaki still maintains that expression on the surface, he is actually making secret calculations in his heart. After I successfully subdue you, I will find a way to slowly isolate you. By then, your companions will naturally no longer be willing to follow a wimp who has surrendered to others. Just when he thought of this, Shiki's expression suddenly changed. It turned out that Tren, who had been sitting on the ground, slowly stood up and patted his butt. What is he going to do? Is he going to hold a ceremony of surrender to me? Shiki's mouth was already a little hard to suppress, and it was even harder to conceal the joy in his heart. However, what Shiki never expected was that after standing up, Tren took a deep breath and shouted loudly, Shiki. I'm here, Tren. Shiki responded subconsciously, and stood up excitedly, expecting that Tren was about to declare his allegiance to him. Join me, okay. Huh. Shaki subconsciously held Tren's hand, his eyes instantly turned into beans and he blinked. Summon 25% direct critical hit. Join my adventure group. Shaki, your pirate career can no longer be described by the word, failure, so change your path. 
Tren didn't give Shiki a chance to break free. He pulled him into his arms with force, and their shoulders touched each other tightly. Hey, Shiki reacted and quickly pulled out his hand, but found that Tren's grip was extremely tight. Golden Lion Shiki, what a great pirate. You have always been someone I admire very much, so please join my team. Tren showed his Jojo style and looked at Shiki with determination. No, Terran, please let go first. Shiki was interrupted before he finished speaking. What first? Do you think what I told you is a lie? Shiki, I remember clearly that time when you dared to go to the Marine headquarters to cause trouble for that guy Roger. At that time, you were so powerful the figure has been lingering in my mind. Tren said very excitedly. Please, you weren't even born yet, okay. What does lingering mean? Shiki couldn't help complaining. And the one who accomplished the first feat in history, escaping from the underwater prison, which was truly unprecedented and unprecedented. Not only did he destroy his legs, but he also wasted two extremely precious and famous sharp knives. In order to make himself look different and more distinctive, he even installed a huge rudder on the back of his head. Shiki, you scold me so dirty. Of course, I don't mean anything else. People with unique experiences and personalities like you are exactly what my adventure group needs. So join us. Tren looked at Shiki expectantly, with excitement in his eyes, of light. However, Shiki was unmoved. He slowly withdrew his hand from Tren's hand, took a few steps back, and said firmly, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my pirate career that was full of failures. Refused. Is this so? What a pity. Terran sighed helplessly. Looking at Terran, Shiki narrowed his eyes and thought to himself, what a smart guy. He uses this method to disrupt the topic without making me feel embarrassed. It seems we are destined to be together. Tren patted the golden lion on the shoulder, I'd better continue my adventure. Yes, it's fate. Shiki nodded with a smile, but he didn't want to give up the Tren team. If he can have the combat power of Tren and Li Jing under his command, no matter what plan he plans in the future, the chance of success will be the greatest. But then again, meeting is fate. Do you want to go to my place and have a look? Maybe you will change your mind. Shiki directly used, first come first served, to want Tren to go to Vermeo with him, which is the base camp of the Sky Pirates. Vilmio. Terran frowned. That's right, an island I discovered in the East China Sea a few years ago. It's full of surprises. Surprise. Tren touched his chin. Seeing Tren's expression, Shiki was worried that he would try to operate in the reverse direction, so he shot directly towards the deck of the Black Pearl. Okay. Don't think so much, just take it as an adventure. Aren't you adventurers? Shiki's voice came, as if a stone was dropped on a calm lake, causing ripples. After saying that, he directly activated his fruit's ability. The black pearl floated slowly like a released balloon, and he quickly ran back to his ship. Captain Tren. Li Jing saw the golden lion leaving the black pearl and walking to Tren's side. There was a trace of doubt in his eyes, are we really going to go to Wilmio as he mentioned? Let's go and have a look. We can't leave now anyway. Tren smiled slightly. His smile was like the spring sunshine, warm and bright, without any fear. Indeed, we are all flying. Sadako nodded, staring at the increasingly smaller sea, as if looking at a dream that was gradually receding. I'm afraid he has no good intentions. Timo said, holding a gun and appearing from the darkness like a vigilant hunter. Don't worry, he has no good intentions, haha. Tren's laughter echoed in the air, like a refreshing breeze, blowing away the haze in everyone's hearts. But don't I have you? That's right, haha. With Lee here, no one can hurt Captain Tren. I'll curse him. It seems like we need to prepare more poison labels. Chapter 39 Floating Island, Wilmayu. Advertise here. Vermeo Island, this originally unknown and ordinary island in the East China Sea, is rich in a rare plant. They contain IQ ingredients, making the animals on the island extremely violent and huge. Due to this special situation, the island has been neglected for a long time, and even pirates dare not approach it easily. However, the trajectory of fate is always full of unexpected turns. One day, Shaki, the golden lion who escaped from Impel Down City and finished his walk, came to the island. After analyzing some of the IQ components on the island with his researchers, he decisively moved the entire island to the sky and became an island. Hidden floating island. Later, in order to make his territory look larger, Shaki tinkered with many small islands to form experimental islands and accommodation islands. So this huge new Vermilu was born. How is it, Terran? Shaki stood on his ornately decorated and extremely huge ship, standing on the head of the shining golden lion on the bow, looking at his vast territory with a look on his face. Full of pride. Terran looked at the extremely proud golden lion and sighed softly, it's really good, but it's a pity. I don't know how long this kind of glory can last. Huh, what do you mean? Shiki turned his head in confusion after hearing Tren's meaningless words. Tren did not answer Shiki's question immediately. Instead, he asked Shiki's age, you should be almost 70 years old now, right? Yeah, Shiki was certainly not stupid. He immediately understood the deep meaning of Tren's words, he was getting older and older, and maybe one day, the island that he once ruled so impregnably would also follow suit. As he ages and dies, he gradually falls apart and collapses. Thinking of this, Shiki's originally proud and complacent expression became a little solemn. 
After a moment of silence, Shaki burst into hearty laughter again. Well, that will happen a long time ago. Welcome to Wilmio. This is the base camp of my flying pirates. Before he finished speaking, the two ships had officially arrived in the sky above Vermeo. It has to be said that the aesthetics of the Golden Lion are still online. At least the layout of Vermeo is quite good. It does not look like a floating island made up of various different parts. Not long after, under the precise control of Golden Lion, the two ships slowly anchored in a large lake on the island. At the same time, a group of members of the Flying Pirates, dressed in costumes similar to those of the Little Life Club, arrived quickly. They stood neatly in two rows, obviously preparing to greet their captain. Captain, an overwhelming shout rang out. I'm back. Shaki nodded normally, and Dr. Indigo, wearing blue overalls and a white coat, ran over with excitement on his face. He is the researcher of the Golden Lion, and he is responsible for all research on the island, but Terran is not interested in this kind of IQ. At this moment, Tren slowly walked down from the Black Pearl with gambling on his waist, and Li Jing followed closely. Sadako was still lying on Tren's back, as if she was asleep. As for Timo, he does not intend to show up easily, just to create a potential sense of threat to the Golden Lion. Yeah, Shaki immediately turned his attention to Tren after seeing him get off the boat. When he found that Timo had not appeared, he frowned slightly and couldn't help but sigh, this person is really vigilant. Indigo looked at Tren curiously, full of doubts in his heart. He felt that Tren didn't look like the younger brother that Golden Lion had just recruited into the pirate group, because Tren's position was almost at the same level as Shaki. Shaki seemed to see Indigo's doubts, patted him on the shoulder, and explained with a smile, this is the distinguished guest I invited, Mr. Tren. He is a very remarkable person. He is not a pirate, but an adventurer. Quote. Adventurer. After hearing Shiki's introduction, Indigo became even more curious about Tren. He looked at Terran secretly, trying to find something special about him. However, apart from being young and having a woman with an unclear face behind him, Tren was nothing special. At most, he had a good appearance. Excuse me, Shiki. Tren nodded to Shiki with a smile, expressing his response, and then calmly looked at the crew members of the flying pirates who were staring at him. Seeing the confidence and calmness in Tren's eyes, Shaki smiled slightly, then waved his hand, how can we not have a banquet when guests are coming? Isn't it right? Yes, all the boys shouted in unison. Let's go, Terran. Shaki looked at Terran and smiled slightly, and then the two of them walked slowly towards the big city on the island. Isn't my flying pirates good? Shaki said, turning his head. There are quite a lot of people, but that's just a lot of people. Tren's evaluation is fair. After all, the Sky Pirates have always been a big pirate group. But the Golden Lion used to have more people, so there were more people who could surround Roger. If it weren't for that big wave, it would be a question whether the Roger Pirates could survive it. But now that there are so many people, there are even more rabble-rousers, and the quality is completely incomparable to what it used to be. Is it just that there are too many people? Hearing Tren's comment, Shaki also felt lonely, and touched the rudder in his mind. In the Battle of Etwal, he lost all his cadres and only the remaining Dr. Indigo, he almost died. That's why I need you, Terran. The Golden Lion's expression fleetingly turned back to a smile. Then you might as well give up everything and join me. Tren also chuckled. So this is the purpose of the captain. Indigo, who was following behind, was thinking to himself, his eyes flashing with thought. He seemed to have guessed his captain's intention. It turned out that he wanted to recruit this group of people to join their pirate group. Thinking of this, Brother Indigo decided to take the initiative and start a conversation with Li Jing. He approached Li Jing and asked with a hint of curiosity, which sea area are you from? And how much is the bounty? The questions asked by Indigo are often topics worthy of pride and pride for pirates. However, to his surprise, Li Jing shook his head and replied firmly, We are not pirates, we are adventurers. Li Jing's answer made Indigo frown. He asked doubtfully, Uh, is there any difference? In his opinion, there is not much difference between pirates and adventurers. Big difference. Li Jing touched his beard and explained with a smile, The pirates don't have a leader, Tren, but our adventure group has a leader. The words revealed their respect and dependence on Tren. In their team, Tren plays a vital role and is their core and soul. So, position is not important. If Tren is a marine, then they are marines, if Trent is a pirate, then we will naturally become pirates. Li Jing's eyes flashed with firm belief, as if conveying a message to Indigo, their loyalty and unity are unshakable. No matter what environment they are in, as long as Tren is there, they are willing to follow him. Chapter 40 The Unwilling Golden Lion Advertise here. Bilameo, Center City. Shaki led the three of them to their main city. The inner hall of the main city was spacious and solemn, and the layout was like a Japanese-style social gathering place. Directly opposite the main platform, there are neat rows of benches, with a group of people wearing kimono sitting on them. Like members participating in some kind of respectful ceremony, they faced forward, knelt on their knees, and looked solemn. On each low table, there are some red round dinner plates, which contain a small amount of food and sake. The background of the entire scene is a dark red wall, dotted with several dim patterns. This picture reveals a solemn and formal atmosphere, which makes people think of a club meeting rather than a banquet. 
Is this what the banquet is like? Or does someone want to cut off their little finger to apologize? Looking at the solemn environment, Tran and the other three couldn't help but be confused, especially him and Li Jing, whose stomachs were already growling. As Shaki Tran and others pushed open the sliding door, the captains of the flying pirates who were kneeling on the ground cast their gazes one after another. Their expressions were serious and serious, without any intention of slacking off. The whole scene was extremely quiet, leaving only an atmosphere of silence and solemnity. Yes, Shaki looked at his subordinates with satisfaction, nodded slightly, and strode towards the main seat. At this time, the lights in the banquet hall were brightly lit and dazzling. The long table at the main table was filled with all kinds of mouth-watering delicacies, and the exquisite gold and silver utensils shone dazzlingly under the candlelight. Taran and his friends were specially arranged in a very conspicuous position, just below Shaki. Sitting next to them were Shiki's cronies Indigo and others, as well as some unidentified cadres surrounding them. Today we have a guest in the Sky Pirates. Shaki held a wine glass in his hand, looked at Tren sitting opposite him, and said with a faint smile on his face. He is Captain Tren from the Adventure Group, and his adventure partners. After hearing Shiki's introduction, everyone present turned their attention to Tren and the people around him. Adventure Group, what is that? Someone asked curiously. Hum, I guess they are also pirates. It's just that they used another name. Another person guessed. In fact, most of the pirates under Golden Lion were recruited by Golden Lion when they were lurking in the East China Sea in recent years. Although their strength is not bad, after all, they are all guys who went to sea after Roger started the Age of Discovery, and they don't know much about, adventurers. After all, starting from the Age of Discovery, as time went by, the title, adventurer, was gradually replaced by, pirate. It seems they don't know the so-called adventure. Shaki picked up the wine glass, his eyes fell on Tren who was eating meat, and there was an imperceptible sneer at the corner of his mouth. Tren didn't pay attention to Shiki's eyes. While chewing the meat in his mouth, he said vaguely, do you know what it has to do with it? They are all a group of pirates who can't get on the stage anyway. But, you hear the food is quite delicious. After saying that, Tren continued to work hard and started eating and drinking with Li Jing beside him. Li Jing also held a big stick of meat in his left hand and ate it with relish. Well, I agree with this. Li Jing agreed, completely unaware of the displeasure flashing in Shiki's eyes. Sadako, on the other hand, knelt down quietly next to Tren. She did not need to eat due to her own special reasons. At this moment, she was concentrating on holding the wine glass for Taran, for fear that he would choke on the food. Can't you get on the stage? Shaki watched all this silently, with an indescribable depression hidden deep in his eyes. He took a sip of wine, trying to cover up his inner emotions with alcohol, but the strange feeling still lingered. However, Indigo, who knew Shiki's purpose, understood his captain's thoughts, so he held the wine glass and toasted to Tren. Captain Tren, right, I've long admired your name. Looking at the guy in the white coat, Terran stopped what he was doing and said with interest, Then do you know when I was born? What have I done? What achievements have I made? Uh, faced with Tren's question, Indigo was stunned. The wine he raised was neither not drinking nor not. Captain Tren, you are joking, how could I? You don't know anything, yet you still look up to my name for so long. Why do you look up to me for so long? Open black lens bracket summon 30% close black lens bracket. I'm being rude, haha. Brother Indigo smiled, and then ran to find Li Jing, but Li Jing just ate it and ignored him at all. After a while, the banquet hall was full of laughter and conversations, but Tren could feel the edge hidden behind these sounds, or that their happiness was to match something. Especially the golden lion Shaki. He is wearing a gorgeous golden robe and is drinking wine by himself. His aura is so powerful that people dare not look directly at him. Shaki once again raised his glass to pay tribute to Tren, and then said in a relaxed tone. Tren, you see how powerful our flying pirate group is now, and there are more than 50 pirate groups under my command. But I am miserable, as you said, none of them can stand on the stage. Isn't that you, Shiki? Tren wiped his hands and said calmly. What's the use of me? Didn't you also say that? Now I am already over 70. We old guys from the old era are already old. When he said this, there was a trace of golden lion in his eyes. Lonely. Charlotte, that woman, only knows how to hide in her own country now. Whitebeard, haha. He probably needs the care of an accompanying nurse. I heard that Akoku also occupied an island in the New World and became a dictator, so Kai not too bad. You understand so clearly. I'm just lurking, not retiring, haha. Hearing Shiki's words, Terran was also stunned, especially Shiki, who was neck and neck with Li Jing at that time. It was hard to believe that such an old era emperor level powerhouse would later lose to Luffy. That's why I need you, Terran, Shiki said slowly. Otherwise, when I get really old, the Sky Pirates will also disband. Tren smiled and said nothing, and did not say anything, and the Golden Lion did not continue to ask. But as the banquet progressed, Shiki's words gradually took on a veiled threat. He talks about the power game of the four emperors at sea, implying that after Tron joins his team and succeeds him, he will gain endless wealth and power, and can also become a four emperors. 
But whenever Tren tried to change the subject, Shaki could always cleverly lead the conversation back to solicitation, with a light that could not be refused in his eyes. So this is what we are planning to do. Tren finally understood that this banquet was just a carefully planned psychological war. Dot dot dot. As the party came to an end, Shaki invited Terran to walk alone in the island's garden. The moonlight shines on the intricate paths, and the shadows of the two people lengthen in the flower-scented air. Are you really not agreeing? Shiki's voice was low and magnetic. He had just shown Tren the secret base of the Sky Pirates and the research results of IQ in the night. Tren, join me and you will own this sky. Shiki's words were full of temptation. He had no intention of giving up. His eyes seemed to be able to see through people's hearts, trying to capture the desire in Tren's eyes. But Shaki failed. He didn't see the ambition or desire in the man's eyes. Shaki, I'm really not interested. Tren stared sideways at Shiki's face. Shiki's face became elusive in the moonlight, but he quickly recovered his smile, patted Tren on the shoulder, and said lightly. Choose bravely, Terran. As soon as he finished speaking, Shaki laughed and left. Roger, who rejected him last time, was faced with Atwal. Chapter 41 The Man Called, Lion. Advertise here. After Shaki left, Terran also left the garden. At the same time, Indigo, who had been staying outside, saw Terran and took the initiative to take the three of them to the prepared room. No, I'm more accustomed to staying on my own ship. Tren waved his hand and refused. He knew very well that the runes on the Black Pearl were custom made, and in every aspect, they were much better than those prepared by the Golden Lion. After all, a golden nest and a silver nest are not as good as your own nest. Rejected, is that so? Brother Indigo looked at the leaving Tren and the others, standing there blankly, thoughtfully in his heart. He seemed to understand something, but he didn't seem to understand it completely, but he saw a trace of confusion and loss in the eyes of the Golden Lion who left first. This made Indigo couldn't help but think of the Golden Lion in the past. At that time, he was following the Golden Lion. The captain is so stubborn and unwilling to accept help and arrangements from others. I always feel that I can do everything by myself and don't need to rely on anyone. Except for Roger, he would not be sad when faced with Roger's rejection. Instead, he fought an unprecedented battle with the other party, but... Alas! Thinking of this, Indigo sighed deeply. Dot dot dot. Main city, Golden Lion's room. The room is very simply decorated, with no too many luxurious decorations except for some necessary daily necessities. However, what is eye-catching is an exquisite sword stand placed beside the bed. Unfortunately, the stand is empty, with only two lonely sword scabbards. At this moment, Shaki was sitting alone on the balcony, his figure looking a little lonely in the moonlight. On the small table in front of him, there was a bottle of sake and a small wine glass. He just looked at the bright moon in the sky quietly and drank by himself. Captain. Suddenly, Indigo's voice came from the door. Shaki turned his head slightly and said softly, come in. Indigo came in and immediately saw the golden lion sitting alone on the balcony. He took small steps and walked to the side behind the golden lion, then knelt down and sat down. Since the golden lion is sitting, according to etiquette, Indigo cannot stand next to him. The night wind blew their hair, bringing a hint of coolness. Shaki was still staring at the bright moon hanging high in the sky, seemingly lost in thought. Indigo stood by silently, without disturbing him, and just looked at the legendary captain with concern in his eyes. It's arranged. Shaki looked away, looked sideways at Indigo, and asked softly. They didn't check in, but went back to their own ship. Indigo replied in a low voice. Go back to your own ship. Shaki raised the corners of his mouth slightly, but did not make any sound. He slowly lowered his head and stared at the, Yingju, and, Deadwood, that replaced his feet. His hand instinctively stretched out to touch the sword, but at this moment, he saw the slightly wrinkled backs of his palms. For a moment, Shiki's expression was startled, and then he quickly turned over his palms. Sure enough, as he expected, the palms that had become rough due to holding the sword hilt for a long time now became smooth. Since losing his feet, he has not touched a sword for many years. At this moment, a complex emotion surged in Shiki's heart, including nostalgia for the past and helplessness about the current situation. He stared at his hands silently, as if he could see the glory and glory of the past through these hands. After a moment of silence, he said, Hey, Indigo. Hearing Shiki's voice, Indigo immediately turned his head with a familiar smile on his face. He has always been like this, always silently by Shiki's side, never flinching no matter what difficulties he encounters. Captain, I'm here. Indigo's voice was firm and powerful. Shiki raised his head and looked into Indigo's eyes, which were full of trust and loyalty. However, at this moment, he suddenly discovered that this brat from his pirate group now had a few wrinkles at the corners of his eyes. Am I? Old. Brother Indigo's smile froze instantly, and he couldn't maintain the smile on his face. How could the captain say such a thing? In his mind, Shaki will always be the omnipotent and powerful legendary figure. Captain Shaki, Indigo shouted excitedly, how can you say that? You are a legendary pirate as famous as Whitebeard and Roger. You are the leader of the largest pirate group in the New World, the Sky Pirates. Captain. You are the man called the, Lion. 
You once forced the Roger Pirates into dire straits, and you even broke into the Marine headquarters alone. You. Indigo became more and more excited as he spoke. His voice echoed in the empty room, and his face was already covered with tears. Every word of Indigo deeply touched Shiki's heart, reminding him of every bit of his past. Yes, I used to be so powerful and arrogant. But what about now? Time is not forgiving, and the passage of time has left obvious traces on him. Ha 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 ha. Looking at Drive, Indigo's face full of tears, Shiki couldn't help but open his mouth and laugh. The laughter reverberated throughout the room, as if it wanted to penetrate the space and spread to further places. At the same time, his thoughts involuntarily drifted back to the thrilling battle with Li Jing. Brother Indigo, I'm really old. Shiki's voice was full of helplessness and emotion, as if the passage of time had made him feel powerless. But it's impossible for me to die in silence. My name will be resounding across the sea again, and I, Shiki, will not lose to Roger. Shiki's eyes shone with determination, as if he was announcing to the world that he the inner reluctance. Captain Shiki. However, Shiki did not respond to his call. Instead, his expression suddenly changed, and then he pulled hard and completely took off the Sakura Ju and Kuraki that originally replaced his legs and held them tightly in his hands. Feeling the familiar touch of his old friend, the Golden Lion completely forgot about the bursts of pain coming from his legs. At this moment, he seemed to be in a world that belonged only to himself, and everything around him became blurred. Only the Sakura Ju and Deadwood in your hands are real. They witnessed his past glory and glory, and also accompanied him through countless difficult and dangerous moments. Looking at the golden lion using the fruit's ability to float in midair, holding the two sharp knives, Ying Ju, and Deadwood, in both hands, Indigo instantly fell into a trance. He seemed to see the high-spirited and arrogant golden lion again, Shaki. Chapter 42 Shaki, if you want to fight, I will fight until the end. Advertise here. At the same time, standing on the deck above a quiet lake in Vermeo, Terran couldn't help but look at the main city in the distance. Captain Tren, that pirate named Shaki is really persistent with us. Li Jing sat on an armchair holding a biscuit in his hand, and skillfully divided it into two halves, half for himself and half for himself. To Timo beside you. I don't know if it's because of the different worlds they live in, but whether it's Terran, Li Jing, or Timo, who is a yodel, their appetites have become extremely huge. I made it so obvious at today's banquet. He probably doesn't have the intention anymore. Tren stretched and said casually. Do you think a strong man of his level would give up so easily? Besides, I'm on his territory now. Sadako tilted her head abruptly and reminded her kindly. Sadako. Why don't you tie up your hair tonight? Looking at Sadako's head that suddenly popped up from beside his shoulder, Tren couldn't help but feel a thump in his heart, and his body trembled accordingly. Especially since it was late at night and everything was quiet, this sudden, probe, really caught him off guard. Well, after hearing Tren's words, Sadako's already pale face became even more gloomy, and her little mouth was pouted, like a wronged little rabbit, you dislike me. How could it be? Who doesn't know that our Sadako is the cutest? Seeing this, Tren quickly explained with a smile, and took the initiative to gently caress her cheek. He didn't want to offend this, aunt, with an unintentional remark. You know, she was notoriously difficult to please. Then you want me to raise my hair. Sadako didn't care at all about the hands rubbing her face. Instead, she widened her light blue pupils and stared at Terran closely. Isn't it because of the night? Look, when the wind blows, doesn't the hair covering your face easily get on your lips? As he spoke, Tren took the initiative to push Sadako's hair to the other side. Now, only he has the privilege to do this. After all, no one can touch Sadako except himself. Really, Sadako put away her emotions and blinked, seeming to be thinking about something. Hey, don't tell me. This little girl still looks great after she lifts her hair. When have I lied to you? Tren said with a serious expression on his face. That's right, the corners of Sadako's mouth raised slightly, revealing an imperceptible smile. Then, her figure appeared behind Tren again like a breeze, and stretched out her hands to hug his neck tightly. However, what was different from before was that this time Sadako had her hair lifted up, making it easy for their cheeks to touch each other when she leaned on Tren's shoulder. Hum, soft, but with a hint of coolness. Tren stared at Sadako and took the initiative to tilt his head in the direction of her approach. This wonderful touch reminded him of the feeling when his niece rubbed his cheek when she was a child. It was warm and comfortable. It's so comfortable, Sadako also felt Tren's unique body temperature and couldn't help but squint her eyes. Like a well-behaved kitten, she gently slid back and forth on his face. Li Jing who witnessed all this, couldn't help but sigh, only Captain Tren can be so close to Sister Sadako. Timo on the side was swinging his short legs that could not reach the ground, and echoed with a smile, that's why Sister Sadako likes our leader. Dot 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 dot. After that dinner party, in the next two days, Golden Lion seemed to have forgotten Tren and never came to look for him again. And Terran had no intention of continuing to waste time in Vermile, so he found Indigo and asked him to convey to the Golden Lion that he was ready to leave. Are you leaving so soon? Looking at Terran, Indigo couldn't help but frown. 
Otherwise, we were originally planning to enter the first half of the Grand Line, but who knew that we were brought here by Shaki? Tren said with a helpless wave of his hand. Then, Brother Indigo was just about to say something, but the Golden Lion's iconic hearty laughter came from a distance. Haha, Tren, are you leaving in such a hurry? Hearing this familiar voice, Tren immediately turned his head and saw a figure walking slowly not far away. The Golden Lion that disappeared for two days reappeared, but with some changes. At this time, the Golden Lion is still dressed in the same outfit, with a cigar in his mouth, but the Ying Ju and Kung Yu that originally replaced his feet have disappeared, replaced by two famous swords pinned to the Golden Lion's waist. The Golden Lion also uses the fruit's ability to half float in the air like an immortal. We haven't seen each other for two days, but we have become a little stranger. Shaki. Tren looked back and chuckled. Really, Shaki floated all the way to Tren and smiled. It's not because he dislikes Tren because he didn't treat him well. Tren. It's okay. We are ready to leave. Shaki. Tren looked at the golden lion floating in front of him and took the initiative to raise his eyes to meet each other. The two of them just looked at each other quietly until the golden lion spoke first. Have you thought it through? Jenny Tren. I've said many times that I have no interest in being a pirate. That's right. Shaki grinned with a playful smile. Then have you considered the consequences of rejecting me? Ha ha. Looking at the golden lion's expression, Tren couldn't help but sneered, as if he was laughing at Shiki's overestimation. Seeing this, the golden lion frowned even more, and a hint of gloom flashed in his eyes, you are very confident in your own strength. By the way, I haven't seen you take action yet. Jenny Tron. Before he finished speaking, the golden lion suddenly burst out with a powerful conqueror's domineering energy. That oppressive aura was like a raging wave, pressing down on Tren with great force. As this important, Shiki. Tren looked at the golden lion, placed his left hand on the hilt of the gambling dog sword, and raised his thumb slightly, triggering the momentum of the gambling dog. In an instant, a majestic momentum like an overwhelming force burst out. This momentum represents the most powerful force from the pirate world. Therefore, there is no way that Tren will lose in a single competition. This, the golden lion, who had only heard what red-haired Shanks said, felt the power of this momentum for the first time at this moment, and it was still unparalleledly powerful. I hate threats. Tren stared at Shaki with a cold face, and stepped forward step by step, while the golden lion swallowed and slowly backed away. There was nothing he could do about this momentum. It's really scary. Shaki, if you want to fight, I will accompany you to the end. After saying this, Tren sheathed gambling, and walked away, leaving the golden lion covered in cold sweat to stay where he was. Chapter 43 Pre-War Advertise here. Ha, huh, it wasn't until Tren left for a long time that Shaki exhaled a heavy breath as if waking up from a dream. Then, as if he had lost all his strength, he slowly slid to the ground along the wall behind him. His eyes were a little hollow, as if he was still immersed in the thrilling scene just now and couldn't extricate himself. Impossible. Dot how is this possible? Shaki muttered to himself, his voice full of disbelief and confusion. He really couldn't figure out why Terran was so powerful. He was obviously not a devil fruit user, and he only looked about 20 years old. Such strength. Isn't it too exaggerated? Even if it is a true genius. It's impossible to have such terrifying fighting power at such a young age. Shiki's pupils trembled slightly, and a strong sense of frustration surged in his heart. He has always thought highly of himself and thought he was already quite a powerful figure, but today he was defeated by a man much younger than himself. Although it was just a competition in terms of momentum, who on the sea didn't know that momentum represents strength. And Tran was still in an almost crushing way. Do you mean, am I really behind the times? Shaki couldn't help but start to doubt himself. Thinking of this, Shaki glanced sideways and saw that Indigo had already been caught in the momentum of the two. He rolled his eyes and lay on the ground like a dead dog. Bang! Shaki looked at the veteran cadre who had been with him the longest and knocked him awake with his scabbard, like knocking on a wooden fish. Ah, kill Captain Shaki, but you can't kill me. When Indigo woke up, his whole body was in a mess, and his hands were waving wildly. Shaki, Lousy is not dead yet. Shaki just kept hitting him. Captain Shaki, looking at Shaki, Indigo looked happy, but remembering the scene before he fainted, his expression darkened. Captain, how about, let's let them go and let everyone go their own way. Huh, Shiki's face froze slightly, and then he wanted to take a puff of cigarette, but found that the cigarette in his mouth had been smoked out by the wind in that momentum, and only the cigarette butt was still in his mouth. Come on, Captain. Indigo instantly took out a cigar and lit it. Huh, Shiki exhaled a puff of smoke and looked into the distance with deep eyes, seeming to be thinking about something. Don't you think I'm a match for that guy? He asked suddenly. Captain Shaki, Indigo hesitated. Don't worry. Well, Captain, I don't think you are the same level of opponents at all. Hearing this, Shaki was not angry, but motioned for Indigo to continue speaking. With Shiki's permission, Indigo became bolder and directly said what he was thinking. I am a person who participated in the Battle of Etwal with you, Captain. Back then, you didn't have to be afraid of Roger's terrifying, Shenshi, Captain. You could easily take it on with the swords of, Ying Ju, and, Kung Yu, and you could even fight him effectively. Back. But, that guy just now was too strong. 
If he had just completely pulled out the knife and struck you, could you really block it? As soon as Indigo finished speaking, Shaki placed his left hand on the hilts of the two famous swords at his waist involuntarily, muttering to himself, can I block it? Thinking of Tren's momentum just now, he had never experienced this kind of terrifying momentum when he faced Peak Roger 20 years ago, or even his own captain. It seemed like an insurmountable mountain. If he really took action how strong will it be? For a moment, Indigo and Shaki were silent in silence, no one spoke, as if time had frozen at this moment. Dot dot dot. Recalling the look of fear on the golden lion's face just now, Tren couldn't help but patted the gambling abuse on his waist, and at the same time carefully checked the system interface again. Open black lens bracket summon 45% close black lens bracket. As expected, the operation he just performed really scared the golden lion. Maybe he is still thinking about things about himself at this moment. But, Terran suddenly thought of this and couldn't help but look back at the main city with the lion's head logo, and he couldn't help but have a trace of doubt in his heart. Will the golden lions really choose to take a step back? As for Shiki's thoughts, Tren is now a little unpredictable. If it were Shiki in another year or two, he might choose to take a step back in order to complete his grand plan of destroying the East China Sea with peace of mind. However, Shiki today is different from before. From the moment he turned those swords back into weapons. This emperor-level pirate from the old era may have made his own choice. Forget it, let's just fight if we can't fight. Tren stopped thinking about these things and walked towards the Black Pearl. On the Black Pearl, as Tren explained what was going on, Li Jing and the other three no longer laughed and laughed but stayed quietly on the deck. The Golden Lion's swordsmanship is good, but if I take it seriously, he won't last long. Li Jing took the lead and said calmly. As the deputy leader of the adventure group, Li Jing's position is the strongest single target in absolute defense. Of course, the premise is that the opponent is willing to challenge him in a duel and does not play any tricks. The Golden Lion is a swordsman, but at the same time, he is also a person with Piao Piao fruit ability. If he really wants to restrict you, it will be very troublesome. Timo mentioned, as a scout, he has already been in the past few days. Completed the collection of information on Bermeo Island. What's more, the total number of pirate groups on the island is not low. There are nearly 5,000 scattered fish, and the weapons are mainly firearms. I'll clean up these guys, Sadako said. The ability of curse killing is completely instantaneous AoE damage in a large area. She is also the only group damage in the group. This, hearing Timo's words, Li Jing frowned. Timo was right, he was just a swordsman, although he had 100% chance of catching a sword with bare hands. But, if the Golden Lion uses the ability of the Piao Piao fruit, he can make him Wusha Taiji Yu. You must know that cutting things also takes time. His fruit ability shouldn't be that strong, right? After all, he needs to contain me while fighting. Li Jing asked tentatively. Half awakened, Tren said slowly, look at this island, he has always maintained it, and you can tell by his completely unburdened look. As long as he is on this island, he is the master of everything, because everything here is under his control. Quote. Including fine sand and so on. Timo also added. Chapter 44 Who will achieve who in this game? Advertise here. This is definitely the first time in our lives that we have faced people of the four emperors level. However, Shaki is still old after all. Coupled with his previous encounters, his combat power now is probably only at the level of a general at best. As for his swordsman's strength, he still exists, but it is definitely not as good as before. Tran explained with a smile. But his adrenaline couldn't help but surge. There is no way, after all, the person standing in front of them is a real golden lion, Shaki. It is definitely not comparable to the superficial golden lion king in the theatrical version. So, we just have to wait and see what happens next. Let's see what choice Shaki will make between the golden lion and the golden retriever lion king. Dot dot dot. Bermeo, main city. Shaki sat on the soft cushion, holding a white cloth in his hand, carefully wiping his two famous swords. Brother Indigo stood aside quietly, with a hint of worry in his eyes. Captain Shaki, you, looking at Shaki who suddenly became less nervous, Indigo had already guessed something. Shaki said softly, Brother Indigo, thank you. Hearing Shiki's thanks, Indigo's eyes couldn't help but moisten, Captain. Actually, I know that you brought me here on purpose, including the island of Bermeo. You want me to regain my confidence and find my goals, and I seem to have gradually fallen in love with this kind of life immersed in dreams. Quote. Indigo raised his head, looked at Captain Shiki's firm eyes, pursed his lips and choked. Captain Shiki, wouldn't it be good for us to go back to the past? At that time, you would ask me every day about the progress of research on IQ components, and I would study hard. Occasionally, everyone would dance in funny poses. Those days were really happy. Quote. Ha ha. Captain Shiki couldn't help but laugh out loud after hearing Indigo's words, that's why I said you, a trainee brat, are not suitable to be a pirate. Saying that, Shaki stood up slowly, walked to the tearful indigo, and patted his shoulder gently. You can't stay in your dreams, but you have to face reality bravely. Only in this way can you truly grow up. Thank you for your hard work these days, brother indigo. I will personally send you to a small island in the East China Sea. 
From today on, you will be free. Feel free to do whatever you like. Captain Shiki's voice reached Indigo's ears. After hearing this, Indigo couldn't help but burst into tears, but he still held back his tears and said, Captain. Hey, 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 why are you still crying? Cheer up, Shiki shouted. His expression became very serious, and then asked. How is the progress of the things I asked you to do before? Indigo raised his head and looked at Shiki. He knew very well that since the captain had made such a decision, no matter how much he begged, it would be useless. So, he quickly regained his composure and replied, As for the figure in the intelligence field you asked me to invite, Morgans, he has now arrived with us. After all, Captain, you are the famous Golden Lion. You have been missing for such a long time, and now there is news suddenly. How could he miss this opportunity with his character? Hum, that stupid bird is actually here. Shaki frowned slightly and sighed secretly in his heart. If not for the fact that Morgans was the king of candid photography in the pirate world, I wouldn't have noticed his traces at all. Thinking of this, Shaki couldn't help laughing. Ha ha, he is indeed a powerful character. He is worthy of being one of the six people in the underground world. After saying this, Shaki pinned the, Sakura Ju, and, Kuraki, around his waist again, then silently floated towards the balcony, slowly bathing in the warm sunshine. Jenny Tren, an opponent like you is qualified for me to take action. If you lose, this battle will reignite my name of Golden Lion Shaki on the sea, and you will become a person who knows the heights of the world. Guy. But, if I lose, then your name, Jenny Tren, will also ring across the sea. This is my thank you gift to thank you for waking me up, but you need to get it yourself. So whether I kill you and return to the sea, or you kill me and become famous all over the world, let's see the result. But no matter what, from now on, you, Jenny Tron, will bear the name of a pirate. When he thought of this, Shiki's heart suddenly became enlightened. He strode out of the balcony without hesitation, bathing in the bright sunshine. Looking around, I saw 45 pirate ships floating densely outside the entire main city. Each ship was filled with pirates, and the total number was as high as 5,000. At this moment, the 45 captains of the Flying Pirates unanimously focused their attention on Shaki. This legendary pirate who was once as famous as Roger and Whitebeard is now exuding unparalleled charm. How long? Shaki murmured to himself, his face became serious, but then the corners of his mouth slightly raised, revealing an imperceptible smile. Immediately afterwards, he quickly reached out and grasped the two supreme sharp knives, Ying Ju, and Kung Yu, at his waist, and pulled them out with force. As the sword was unsheathed, an even more powerful conqueror's hockey spurted out of Shiki's body, as if it was about to swallow up the entire world. At this moment, Shiki seemed to have returned to the moment when he launched the battle of a burr against Roger. At that time, he was arrogant, arrogant, and full of incomparable self-confidence. Now, he faces the enemy in front of him with the same attitude. Jenny Thrawn. The scene turned, and in sharp contrast to the huge flying pirate group, there was only a lone black pearl above the lake. Tren stood steadily on the bow of the Black Pearl, with a famous sword called, Gamble, on his left waist. Li Jing stood on his left, Timo on his right, and Sadako behind him. Looking at the high-spirited man with flying blonde hair and two knives in his hands. Tren showed no fear at all. Instead, he smiled slightly, took a deep breath, and a trace of determination flashed in his eyes. Golden Lion, Shaki, Chapter 45 The Flying Pirates vs. The Tren Adventure Group. Advertise here. Is this your choice? Shaki stared at Tren in front of him holding a thick cigar in the corner of his mouth, and his eyes suddenly became fierce. Now that the matter has come to this, do you still think there is room for negotiation on this matter? So, do you want me to kill you here? As he spoke, Shaki took the cigar out of his mouth and pinched it out with his fingers. You can give it a try. Tren's right hand was gently placed on the weapon called, gambling, and then he turned around and gave orders to the ship elf Xiao Hei. Start the auto cruise mode immediately and drive away from the battlefield quickly. Yes, Captain. Xiao He saluted with a standard military salute, and then got into the Black Pearl like a burst of black smoke. Almost at the same time, Shaki had already boarded his own ship, standing firmly on top of the Golden Lion's head. I saw him holding Ying Ju tightly in his left hand, waving his arm forward vigorously, and shouting angrily, Kill them! As soon as he finished speaking, 45 pirate ships fired at the same time, and countless shells swooped towards Tren and his party with ear-piercing whistling sounds and deafening explosions. Boom! Bang! However, at this critical moment, a purple sword light flashed by, and all the fired shells were cut off at the same moment. Swordsman, E.H., the captains of the pirate group were stunned and their jaws almost dropped. The strength of this group of East China Sea pirates was still low. They looked at the purple-robed middle-aged man in midair in disbelief, and an unspeakable fear surged in their hearts. Golden Lion, right, at this time, Li Jing suddenly locked his eyes on Shaki, with a cold light flashing in his eyes, and said coldly, I should have killed you last time. Really? Shaki raised the corners of his mouth slightly, revealing a disdainful smile. He flashed, holding the two swords in both hands and crossing them on his chest, instantly forming the image of a roaring lion head, and at the same time shouted, Two swords flow. Lions roar. 
As he shouted, a powerful momentum burst out from him, like a hurricane sweeping past. Just as Li Jing briefly faced the Golden Lion, the ships of other pirate groups landed one after another, and the pirates rushed towards Tren in groups. Sorry to trouble you, Sadako. Seeing this, Tren turned his head slightly and glanced at Sadako. No trouble, Sadako's ethereal voice came, and then slowly floated into the sky, her hands wide open, and the long hair covering her face began to grow wildly, like a group of hungry lion majesty, looking for their prey. Each strand of long hair accurately found a pirate, and then penetrated through the mouth, eyes, and ears. What's this? Ghost. No. Help me. I don't. I don't want to die. This is the feeling. Fear surges into my heart like a tide, fear follows me everywhere, the feeling of shame is suffocating, and the desire to survive burns in my heart, ha ha ha. Sadako burst out with a piercing cry, followed by sudden silence, and then whisper a word. Kill with curse. As soon as she finished speaking, Sadako's figure completely disappeared like smoke, and the pirates who were frightened at first saw that the long hair that had turned into her body also disappeared like a phantom, and they couldn't help but be stunned. Is everything okay? The pirates caressed their faces, and just about to show contemptuous ridicule, they saw black blood spreading in their eyeballs like a plague. Then, pairs of pale hands began to pull open their eye sockets, and slowly, countless Sadako crawled out of their eyes like maggots. Ah, ah, no. On the other side, the same goes for Timo. Because of his arrangement early in the morning, many pirates have already stepped on the poisonous mushrooms he arranged. But Timo did not use a sniper rifle, but held a dagger, his figure looming in the poisonous gas as he crazily harvested lives. I recognize your swordsmanship, no one in this sea can challenge you alone. But, I am not interested in you now. Shaki used the power of Piao Piao fruit to distance himself from Li Jing. Troublesome ability. Li Jing looked at the golden lion and spat. Then he was about to step forward, but the golden lion didn't want to play with him anymore and just raised his left hand. Suddenly, two small islands floated over at an extremely fast speed and hit Li Jing hard. This thing can't limit a swordsman. Li Jing raised his hand and smashed the island into pieces, but this was exactly the purpose of the golden lion. Ha ha ha, the swordsman is indeed strong, but, faced with my ability, you should just stay quiet. Shiki held his palm, and the broken rock instantly attached to Li Jing's body. What the hell? Li Jing looked at the rocks that were chipped by him and stuck to his body. He subconsciously did not regard this attack as a, blank blade, and therefore did not defend himself immediately. Damn it, if you have the ability to challenge me alone. By the time he finished speaking, Li Jing had turned into a rock ball, but it was impossible for the golden lion to arrange a strong swordsman like Li Jing like this, so he even wrapped it with an extra layer of water. I knew it. Seeing Li Jing trapped, Tren's eyes narrowed slightly. Facing a pure swordsman like Li Jing, the best way for the golden lion was to trap him temporarily. Jenny Tren. After restraining Li Jing, Shaki stared directly at Tren and slowly fell to the opposite side of him. Now we can have a good fight. Try it. Tren also smiled, because this scene completely triggered the judgment mechanism of gambling delusion. In other words, I, now have unlimited opportunities to draw my sword. At this time, the sun shed a faint light through the clouds. Terran and Shaki stood on both sides, their eyes meeting each other. Bang, Shaki directly used the two swords of Bamatu, Sakura Ju, and, Deadwood, to spread out the aura. Ba Tang, I can't help it, I won't take it lightly when facing you. Really, Tren smiled slightly, and then drew, Gamble, for the first time in the lottery. The blade shone with a cold light, but it was a pity that he missed. You don't even need to be domineering. Are you looking down on me? The golden lion looked at the mediocre knife and suddenly became angry. He rushed towards Tren and unleashed a fierce sword energy with both swords. Lion. Thousand Slice Valley. Seeing the oncoming slash, Tren used his instinct to dodge flexibly, and at the same time counterattacked, slashing the golden lion directly. How did he dodge just now? No matter who it is, they will be stunned when they see Tren's instinctive dodge for the first time. However, the golden lion quickly returned his sword to resist, and the two swords clashed, making a harsh metal collision sound. Nani. Seeing that the two famous knives attached to Ba Tang could not cut off an ordinary knife, the golden lion was confused again. But Terran would not give him a chance. The attack was as fierce as a violent storm, and every knife carried the greatest power. Shaki blocked frantically while looking for Tren's flaws. At the same time, his dual sword style skills allow him to switch offense and defense in an instant, putting great pressure on Tren. During this period, Tren will draw his sword again as soon as he has a chance to distance himself, but the 10% probability is really low. But fortunately, he has the power of self-healing, and any place injured by the Golden Lion will recover quickly. This also led the Golden Lion to believe that Tren used his armed color to perfectly block the moment he attacked him. The battle lasted for a while, and both of them were confused. One because he didn't win the prize, and the other fell into self-doubt. Be serious, bastard. I've been very serious taking the lottery seriously, okay? You, Golden Lion gritted his teeth he really couldn't understand. Call Tren this guy strong. His attacks, just say he's not strong. He can dodge your attacks every time, and you can't hurt him, so until now both of you have been beaten. No injuries at all. 
But this scene is different for a guy holding a camera, because in the perspective of Morgan in the video, Terran is completely pressing the golden lion to fight. This guy named Terran is so scary. Dot dot dot. Back on the battlefield, suddenly, Tren drew his sword and launched a fierce attack. His single sword struck Shaki like lightning. Shaki hurriedly waved his sword to resist, but was shocked by Tren's power and couldn't help but take a few steps back. I'm not here to play house with you. Golden Lion also guessed at this moment that Tren was relying on his physical talent. So he shook his hand and said, Lion power, earth coiling. Boom. Suddenly, the land on all sides of Tren formed a lion's head, surrounding Tren, and then swallowed it. Whoops. At this time, Timo found the right opportunity and fired a poisonous arrow, but the Golden Lion noticed it and instantly turned his body into armor. But at the moment when the poisonous mark was about to touch him, he still ducked sideways, because the moment he saw it, he couldn't stop it. He is indeed a troublesome guy. Then the golden lion waved his big hand. Iron prison forest. In an instant, countless iron rods rained down from the sky, and Timo couldn't help but dodge the large-scale attack. Bang. At this time, Tren also rushed out, and sheathed gambling again, making a gesture of drawing the sword. Tren, if you only have this strength, then die quietly. Looking at Tren soaring into the sky, the golden lion clenched his hands again. Shiwei. Govern place earth coiling. The differential substances in the air are directly manipulated by it to form a lion-like air flow, which gathers at the location of Tren. Die in despair. I won this one. Just when the golden lion thought he was the winner, a cold voice sounded. Swastika. Suddenly, everything around him turned into ice sculptures, and the five huge lion heads were only the slightest difference from Tren. Tren's eyes were slightly half-opened, and he breathed out a breath of cold air. Dagor and Hirenmaru. Chapter 46 The First Interpretation. Advertise here. This. This. Looking at the scene in front of him, the golden lion was completely stunned. His eyes widened and his mouth opened wide, but no sound came out of his throat. It was as if time stopped flowing at this moment, and the whole world was left with only the shocking scene in front of me. Sit upright in the frosty sky. Tren held tightly the completely dissolved Hyoran pill in his hand, feeling the powerful power it contained. Then he slowly pulled out the knife, and at the same time, a strong and extremely cold air spewed out like a volcano erupting. This cold breath spread quickly like a plague, even affecting the weather at this moment. The originally clear sky was instantly shrouded in dark clouds, and snowflakes began to fall on the ground. The changes in Terran's body are even more astonishing. His appearance at this time is completely different from the form of Hiranmaru's master in Shinigami when he was decapitated. When the Zanpakuto was unsheathed, Tren's short black hair seemed to be enchanted, growing at a speed visible to the naked eye until it extended to his waist. His hair color became as white as snow, his eyelashes and eyebrows also turned into the same color, and his pupils turned into a light silver, emitting a cold and mysterious light. At the same time, the clothes on his body also changed. The original clothes were replaced by a white robe. The robe was like made of ice and snow, shining with crystal light, perfectly blending with his temperament at the moment. At this moment, Terran seemed to be transformed into the god of ice and snow, controlling the coldest power in the world. His presence filled the surrounding space with a biting chill, making people feel awe. Watching all this, the golden lion came back to his senses, suppressed his inner emotions, and grinned, as this your real power. Jenny Tren. He guessed that Terran should also have some kind of devil fruit ability. This kind of extreme ability could not be achieved by humans, and his ability was similar to that of the marine general. Tren ignored golden lion's shouting, but slightly lowered his eyes and looked at the high orange pill in his hand, and said calmly. Does it belong entirely to my power? Gamble. Daegurian Hyrimaru, the completely swastika Zanpakuto that I drew did not give Tren all the abilities like someone in Shinigami, but it was the Zanpakuto that only belonged to Tren at this moment. So Tren did not inherit any moves. He only had his own power at this time. As for how to use it, it was all up to him. I'm asking you a question. Looking at Tren, who was completely indifferent to himself, the golden lion's pupils trembled, and he grabbed both sides with both hands. Suddenly, the lion heads that had been turned into ice sculptures were manipulated again. Lion power. Ice field earth coiling. As expected of being half awakened, in just a moment, he controlled the ice crystals present in his hand. Looking at the ice lion head that wanted to devour him, Terran directly controlled the Hyrimaru in front of his chest. Ice chop. Crystal shattering. As soon as he finished speaking, Terran waved his hand lightly, and a blue like energy emitted. Bump. Immediately afterwards, all objects that tried to get close to him turned into ice crystal fragments like fine sand. Ha. The golden lion didn't hesitate. He seemed to have known that his attack would be neutralized, so after activating the fruit ability, he decisively used the double sword style. Two sword style, lion attack. Seeing the golden lion coming at him like a stream of light, Terran dodged the attack and waved the Hyrimaru at the same time. Ice mark. With a swing of the knife, all the atmospheric moisture in the direction of the slash turned into ice crystals. Seeing this, the golden lion quickly raised his left hand slightly to control a water cube and block it in front of him. This ability, looking at the ice slash that penetrated the 100-meter water cube, the golden lion bit out and directly reached out to touch the ice cube. Then turn them into ice tips and shoot them towards Terran. 
Give it back to you. However, Tran was extremely fast, shuttling between the ice tips like a ghost, constantly chipping them with his hyoran pills. In an instant, Terran teleported to the Golden Lion, and he could even clearly see the surprised and frozen facial expression of the Golden Lion. Frost Space Extreme. A circular energy shield expanded, and all elements in the space were frozen, as if time had stopped. Kill the Lion. After all, Golden Lion was once a powerful emperor. With rich combat experience, he directly cancelled his ability to levitate. Then at the moment of falling, use the inertia to escape faster like an arrow leaving the string. Chop. In an instant, the Golden Lion appeared below Tren like lightning, and a domineering slash struck out like thunder. Frost. Tren's reaction was as fast as lightning. He adjusted his posture in an instant, raised the high pill high like a cold moon, radiating cold light, and slashed down. Bump. In a moment, the slash turned into ice crystals, shattering like fireworks. As time went by, the Golden Lion's power gradually dried up, while Tren's attacks became more and more fierce like a violent storm. Finally, Tren suddenly jumped up and swung the sword with all his strength. A huge ice blade roared like a dragon and flew towards the golden lion. Ice slash. Split dragon. Damn it. The golden lion wanted to dodge, but it was too late. The ice blade was like a meteor, directly penetrating half of his body and freezing him in the ice. You are no match for me. Tren looked at the golden lion and smiled slightly, because I am called a hanging dog. Tren is not the kind of person who relies on the abilities given by the system and then mocks a person who has worked hard to achieve emperor level strength. He is a relatively down-to-earth person. Ha ha. Dragging his half-frozen body, the golden lion laughed. As for what Tren just said, he didn't listen at all, but looked around. Sure enough, their own flying pirate group had been destroyed by the group at this time. Sadako and Timo were very quietly watching the battle between Tren and the golden lion. Even Li Jing was only blocked for a few minutes before cutting through the broken rock. However, when he saw the golden lion confronting his captain, he sheathed his sword and waited for the battle to end. They trust you very much. The golden lion coughed out blood uncontrollably from the corner of his mouth. It was obvious that the ice slash that penetrated half of his body had injured his internal organs. Because we are partners in an adventure group, Tren did not take the opportunity to attack, but quietly answered the Golden Lion's words. He could see that the Golden Lion's life was passing crazily. Ahem. Another mouthful of blood spat out, and the Golden Lion touched his mouth, adventure group. Ha ha ha. After laughing, the Golden Lion said in a voice that only Tren could hear, Kill me. I hate this useless way of dying. There is no need to show mercy to me. I have no hometown. I am a lion who belongs to the sea. Yeah. Looking at the golden lion, Tren nodded. This was the first time that he felt that the reality of this world was not the golden lion in the theater version in his memory, but a golden lion with flesh and blood. Then come on. I won't let you go. Jenny Tren. The golden lion holds a knife in each hand, holding its head and chest high like a lion, maximizing the ability of the fluttering fruit. From the clouds in the sky and the earth on the ground, two extremely huge lion heads appeared, following the golden lion like guardians on the left and right. I saw the golden lion's two swords intertwined, and a breath-like energy emerged around him, and then flashed out. Lionfall. Sit in the frosty sky. Tren stood with a knife in his hand, his whole body filled with cold air, as if he had turned into ice and snow. The most beautiful time to bloom, the spirit of white snow. As Tren sang softly, frost lotuses began to bloom one after another in the air. And Terran was in the center, like a blooming snow lotus. He raised his eyes slightly, and what came into view was the arrogant smile of the golden lion. That's it. Jenny Thrun. Follow the name of my golden lion and embark on your journey to become a great pirate. Goodbye, Shaki. Tren moved his arm lightly and slashed out with a sword. Kacha kacha. A white light flashed, and all the lotus flowers were chopped into pieces, including the golden lion. Chapter 47 The dust has settled. Advertise here. The lotus shattered, Tren sheathed his sword, and all the dust fell to the ground. It's a lie. Morgans, who had been recording and watching the entire battle with a video bug, couldn't help but tremble with his long beak. Golden lion Shaki. He, he's dead and the guy who killed him, wasn't even a pirate. Morgans turned his attention to Tren's group, especially the boy who killed Shaki alone. After a while, Morgans' shock was replaced by excitement. He now had real big news in his hands that could shock the world. Thinking of this, Morgans no longer wasted time, waving his wings and flying into the distance. At this time, he finally understood the purpose of Golden Lion inviting him here. Shaki had no intention of coming back at all. Golden Lion, you want to use your own death to let this boy embark on the road of pirates. Use your name and fame to give him a perfect entrance. This is so crazy, this is the golden lion Shaki. Ha ha. The pattern of the sea is about to change. Back in Terran, the golden lion's body was under the Hyoran pill, turned into ice crystals and scattered with the wind into the sea that he had been chasing all his life. Shaki, looking at the, Sakura Ju, and, Deadwood, standing there, Tren stepped forward to pull them out and put them away, and then looked up. Is this your purpose? Obviously, the golden lion's roar before his death made Tron realize everything. Captain Tren. Li Jing shouted, then rushed over and wanted to give Tren a bear hug. 
It's up to the men to kiss each other, thank you. Looking at Li Jing, Tren turned sideways and hid, and then Li fell to the ground and gnawed in the mud. Ba, 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 Captain Tren, you are discriminating and sexist. Will Li's beard pierce you? What do you think? My Sadako's face is soft and has a cooling effect. I. Dot you. Looking at Terran who was cuddling with Sadako, Li Jing fell into the autistic mode, picked up a wooden stick and drew circles on the spot. Everything is over. Timo breathed a sigh of relief. Looking at everyone's happy appearance, the corners of his mouth under the mask slightly raised. Having experienced the departure of the Omega team, he has always been afraid of losing his partners again, but this worry should there won't be any. Just when Timo was about to leave, he discovered that there was a strange fruit in the fruit basket in the storage room of the damaged pirate ship beside him. What is this? A new variety of fruit. As soon as Timo picked it up, he heard Li Jing calling him to celebrate, and then he put it in his arms. Just when Tren and his group were still celebrating the end of the battle, a roar came from. Immediately afterwards, the island under everyone's feet began to collapse and collapse. It was obvious that without the ability of the golden lion fruit to maintain, this floating island ushered in the moment of collapse. Captain Tren, this can't be. Li Jing stared at Tren and frowned. If the golden lion dies, this island will naturally fall out of control. As soon as Tren finished speaking, the ground beneath everyone's feet collapsed instantly, or it could be said that because of the battle between Golden Lion and Tren, the island was already in pieces. Dot dot dot. East China Sea, sea surface. A marine warship is driving slowly on the sea. Like a marine warship, it has multiple decks, and each deck is covered with various cabins and facilities. The sail is huge and brightly colored, with the words, Marine, printed on it. But if the only difference is that the most eye-catching part is the bow. There is a cartoon dog head image on the bow, with its mouth open and biting a bone. There is a mischievous light in the eyes, giving people a sense of humor and liveliness. Lieutenant General Garp. Garp's adjutant looked helpless as he watched Garp lying on the deck basking in the sun. Fleet Admiral sent a message asking you why you took leave again. Warring states. Garp picked his nose carelessly, who said I asked for leave. Not long ago, didn't a big event happen in Rog Town. I'm here to investigate, okay. However, Fleet Admiral knows that our route is wrong. Huh, it seems so, ha ha. Garp laughed and scratched his head. But it doesn't matter. Warring states won't care. Besides, I will definitely pass by Rog Town when I go back. I'll take a look then. Lieutenant General Garp. The adjutant looked helpless. Just as he was about to turn around and reply to the message, water waves suddenly exploded next to the warship. Is it a pirate? All marines suddenly became alert. Don't worry so much, it doesn't look like a pirate. Garp stood up from the chair where he was sunbathing and stared at the sky. He saw countless island gravel falling from the sky. This ability. Looking at the strange scene, Garp couldn't help but think of his old rival. At this time, the adjutant also asked someone to pull the cannonball to Garp's side. After all, only Garp could handle this situation. Garp just pondered for a while, then picked up the cannonball and exerted slight force on his arms. Fist bone meteor swarm. Suddenly, countless reinforced artillery shells were fired at the island fragments, and explosions resounded in the air. Whoops. Just when Garp was about to throw the second round, a sword flashed and all the shells were split into two. Huh. Garp frowned, and then several figures fell from the sky and landed on the head of his warship dog. Garp. Looking at the rude old man on the warship, Tren was stunned. Did they fall on Garp's warship? Who are you? Looking at Tren and his group, Garp looked a little solemn. The attack just now was not weak. Ha ha. A temporary stare. Tren waved his hand, then turned to stare at Li Jing. Where's our ship? It turned out that during the landing just now, Tren also saw the Black Pearl, so he asked Li Jing to pick it up. As for how to pick it up, it depends on our Mr. Li's, 100% empty-handed pickup. As long as Li Jing treats the falling Black Pearl as a white blade, he can trigger this ability. Don't ask what is impossible, because the conceptual level ability of the rules is just such a bug. What about that? Li Jing looked at the Black Pearl parked on the sea not far away, and then said, we landed at the wrong location, Captain. Is that so? Tren scratched his head, then smiled at Garp, excuse me. Then several people jumped back to the Black Pearl. Lieutenant General Garp, they are not pirates. Garp's adjutant knew the situation of pirates in the East China Sea, otherwise Garp would not have been able to catch so many every time he came back. These guys, looking at the Black Pearl, Garp's eyes darkened, aren't they pirates? Chapter 48 I'm not interested in being a dog for the Celestial Dragons. Advertise here. When he thought of this, the corners of Garp's mouth suddenly raised slightly, because he knew very well that Marine was currently facing a talent shortage. If the group of guys in front of him were not pirates, then he could definitely help Sengoku recruit them. When he thought of this, Garp immediately turned his head, stared closely at the adjutant beside him, and then said, Stop the boat immediately, I'll be back as soon as I can. However, just as the adjutant had time to shout, Vice Admiral Garp, Garp had already jumped forward and used Moonwalk to jump directly towards the Black Pearl. At this moment, Terran and others on the Black Pearl had just relaxed for a while, but a figure suddenly fell from the sky and shouted loudly. 
Hey, young people. Garp. Terran frowned. You're not going to get into trouble because I stepped on your dog's head, right? Garp. I always feel like you are scolding me, but I have no proof. Haha, <laughs> of course not. Garp still had that iconic smile, and then stretched out his left hand. That's not right. Looking at Garp's action, Terran realized something in an instant and screamed in his heart. As expected, the next moment Garp shouted, meeting his fate, young man. Join Marine. I knew it would be like this. Tren smacked his lips, and then looked at Garp helplessly, obviously dissatisfied with his behavior of forcibly recruiting people into the group. Lieutenant General Garp, you can't impose your unfulfilled wishes on others. Tren said calmly. Hearing Tren mention Luffy, Garp's eyes suddenly lit up. Do you know Luffy? I've been to Windmill Village. Tren replied casually. That only proves that we are destined. Garp clapped his hands excitedly, and then said very confidently, I can tell at a glance that you guys are all born marine materials. Ha ha. Faced with Garp's warm invitation, Terran seemed a little indifferent. He lay lazily on the deck chair and let Sadako behind him work hard to massage his shoulders with her cold hands. We are just adventurers. If nothing happens, can you please leave my ship? Tren said calmly, as if he didn't want to get too entangled with Garp. Adventurers. Garp couldn't help but frown after listening to Tren's words. Especially after seeing the size of Tren and others, he secretly muttered to himself. Is this a team of adventurers? It's just a small pirate group. He knew in his heart that if these young people were allowed to develop, they would probably go astray. Garp sighed helplessly and thought to himself. Forget it, in this case, I can't just sit idly by and do nothing. So, he resolutely raised his fist and prepared to take action. It's better to take you back first. As for other things, I'll leave them to warring states. Garp said to himself. Anyone who knows Garp knows very well that his, iron fist of love, is usually only used on young people. So I sincerely want to bring Tren and the others back to the marine headquarters to train them properly. Let my love influence you, young men. He said it quickly, and before Garp finished speaking, he had already taken action quickly. Bang. Accompanied by a dull loud noise, Garp threw his love fist with all his strength, but it didn't hit the target as he imagined. Instead, it was easily blocked by a middle-aged man in purple robe. Li Jing only used one index finger to easily neutralize Garp's attack, such a sudden attack is not good. After saying that, Li Jing turned to Captain Tren and asked, Captain Tren, do you want to kill him? His tone was calm, as if he was asking about a normal thing. Captain Tren waved his hand, tell him that I am not interested in being a dog for the Draco, and let him return to his ship. For strong men like Garp who rely purely on physical skills, Li Jing is undoubtedly their nemesis. At this time, Garp had still not recovered from the shock. He stared at Li Jing blankly, repeating in his mind the scene where his attack was easily blocked by the opponent with one index finger. At this time, Li Jing looked at Garp with a smile and said, You heard it, right. Our leader is not interested in being used as a dog by the Tianlong people. But it is also strange, you look upright, how can you like to use people as dogs? Quote. Marine is a righteous existence. Garp said solemnly, then stared at Li Jing warily. When Terran heard Garp's words, he couldn't help but laugh out loud, how about this, you kill five celestial dragons, and then I take them to become marines. Ha ha. Garp also laughed out loud, I hate those guys too, but. I can't do anything to them. Then get off my boat, understand. Garp. Tren's eyes darkened slightly. Don't you know that this guy can block my iron fist full of love? Garp withdrew his fist fiercely, and then flashed in front of Tren. Just as he was about to take action, his body suddenly attacked Li Jing uncontrollably. Then the two returned to the familiar scene just now. In my opinion, your attack can be regarded as a white knife attack. Li Jing smiled helplessly. Interesting, how many can you catch? Garp's eyes became sharp, and his hands were covered with arm domineering. Fist bone continuous hits. Garp's fists hit Li Jing like a storm. Each punch contained huge power and speed, as if it was about to tear the entire air apart. However, facing such a fierce offensive from Garp, Li Jing seemed unusually calm and calm. Do you understand the 100% gold content? Although Garp's attacks were extremely fast, Li Jing was always able to accurately catch each punch with his index finger and deflect it easily. Hum. This picture is very abstract. It's more abstract than Hawkeye. It's just the difference between one finger and two. This guy, then come and try to receive my full blow. Garp muttered secretly in his heart. Therefore, he decided not to retain his strength. Among the many punches, Garp mixed in a super fierce attack. Accompanied by a loud noise, bang. An astonishing wave of explosive energy suddenly exploded and surged towards the direction of Li Jing. However, what surprised Garp was that Li Jing still resisted the blow easily. Although his hair was slightly messy due to the shock wave, his fingers were unscathed. Block. Stop. Garp's eyes widened, looking in disbelief at the fingers that were still firmly blocking his fist bones. At this moment, Garp noticed a figure that instantly moved behind him like a ghost. After taking a closer look, it turned out to be the woman with long hair covering her head. At this time, her hands were covering her head like a ghost. At the same time, 
Timo on the other side also raised his sniper rifle and accurately aimed at Garp's heart. Tren smoothly pulled out the famous sword, Sakura Ju, that he took from the Golden Lion, and the sharp blade shone with a cold light. This is Shiki's weapon. Garp couldn't help but froze for a moment when he saw the, Sakura Ju, in Terran's hand. The legendary pirate who had fought against him, Golden Lion Shiki, appeared in his mind. Don't ask, just do what you want. Tren's tone was as calm as water, interrupting Garp's slightly open mouth. As that so, what's your name? Garp's eyes were fixed on Tren, with a hint of vigilance in his eyes. Jenny Trent. Trent replied calmly, with an unquestionable majesty in his voice. I'll remember you. Garp said and left directly, and Terran didn't stop him. Chapter 49 Rise to Fame. Advertise here. Time passed. Three days later, as seagulls flying out one after another delivering newspapers, an explosive news, like a bombshell, set off an uproar in this long calm sea. The former captain of the Sky Pirates, the legendary pirate Golden Lion Shaki, who is as famous as Roger and Whitebeard, has fallen. The story of this man who once stirred up troubles has finally come to an end. What is unexpected is that the person who ended the life of this legendary pirate was just an unknown boy. New World, the country of Wano, in the territory of Onigashima Beast Pirates, Flame Calamity Jin dressed in black is standing quietly next to Kaido. He slowly opened the newspaper in his hand. When he saw the headlines in today's newspaper, his expression changed slightly. Huh, Kaido, who was tall and shirtless, sat quietly on the main seat and asked in confusion. He noticed the change in Jin's expression, so he frowned and asked, what's wrong? Could it be that my fight with Whitebeard a few days ago was published in the newspaper again? Captain. Hearing Kaido's question, Jin sighed deeply, then turned around, stared up at Kaido, and said in a heavy tone, it said that Golden Lion Shaki died got it. When Kaido heard this, a look of shock appeared on his face. His eyes widened and he asked in disbelief, what? That guy Shaki is dead. How is this possible? Did Marine do it? You know, the Golden Lion used to be a strong man galloping on this ocean with them. Although he disappeared for a while, now he heard the news of his death. Kaido didn't react for a while. Marine didn't do it. Jin handed over the newspaper. Kesha looked at the news in the newspaper and couldn't help but use her hands. Morgans knew how to market. So the headline picture in the newspaper was the picture of Tren killing the Golden Lion with one sword. Shaki, are you over too? Kaido still had a gloomy face for a long time. He and the Golden Lion more or less spent their days as, partners, on the same ship. Now that he heard the news of his death, Kaido couldn't help but feel a surge of complicated emotions in his heart. As this guy named Jenny Tren the one who killed Shaki, Kaido asked after being silent for a long time. Another guy has risen. Jin nodded with a heavy heart, indicating that the news was conclusive. If you find this guy entering the new world, tell me. Kaido said calmly, then grabbed his wine bottle and drank it, and finally smashed it hard. I want to see what he relied on to kill Shaki. Dot 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 dot. At the same time, in the distant land of all nations, in the territory of Bigmom, one of the four emperors, a hustle and bustle was taking place. Shaki, Shaki, Shaki. The ant seemed to have lost her mind, devouring the mountains of cakes and desserts in front of her crazily. Her mouth opened wide and she kept stuffing food into her mouth, as if she could never fill her bottomless pit of appetite. The ant's children standing aside watched all this silently. Their faces showed various complex expressions, some were shocked, some were sad, and some were deep fear. No one can understand the true emotions deep in Auntie's heart at this moment. Ever since she learned the news of the death of Golden Lion, she has become like this and fallen into a state of madness that she cannot extricate herself from. The newspapers scattered on the ground contained detailed reports about the death of the Golden Lion. Every word and sentence struck everyone's hearts like a heavy hammer. However, faced with their mother's strange behavior, they were helpless and could only watch her eating in silence, hoping that this would calm her down a little. The whole scene was extremely quiet. Only the sound of ant chewing food echoed in the air. No one knew what Ant was thinking. Dot 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 dot. In a certain area of the New World, a whale like Moby Dick is quietly staying here. Whitebeard was sitting on the deck carelessly, with many hanging bottles hanging on his body. At this moment, the Whitebeard pirates are all celebrating that Ace has become Daddy's son. Marco, why are you looking like this? Ha ha. Whitebeard took a sip of wine and looked at his pineapple-headed son. Dad. Marco held the newspaper and said with a heavy face, the golden lion is dead. Huh. Whitebeard, who was about to drink, was stunned for a moment, then slowly put down the big bowl that was handed to his mouth, and asked for confirmation, is that guy Shaki dead? Yes, dad. Marco nodded, then unfolded the newspaper, he was killed by this young man named Jenny Tren. Looking at the picture of Shaki being beheaded in the newspaper, Whitebeard drank the wine he had just put down in one gulp, his eyes full of loneliness. Shaki, have you left too? How many of us old era guys are left now? For a moment, Whitebeard fell into silence, which was in sharp contrast to the cheerful atmosphere of the young people on the boat. Suddenly, the newspaper in Marco's hand was blown up by a strong wind, fluttering gently in the wind, as if telling the end of an era. Dot dot dot. The one who reacted differently from the other three emperors was the red-haired pirates. Sure enough, he is a powerful guy, 
Shanks looked at the newspaper, smiled slightly, and put the newspaper on the table. Bang. The moment the red-haired man put down the newspaper, a bullet struck like lightning and penetrated the newspaper directly. The target of the bullet was Tren's photo on the newspaper. The red-haired man frowned slightly, but he was not too surprised. He seemed to have expected this situation. Jesus B.U. stood aside, staring at the punctured newspaper with cold eyes. There was a ferocious sword wound on his chest. Next time we meet, I will kill him. He gently pulled the bolt, then put the spear on his shoulder, exuding a cold killing intent. I think we will see him soon. Beckman took a puff of cigarette and exhaled a puff of smoke, his eyes shone with a shrewd light, as if he had seen through everything. Even he wants to regain the face he lost last time. After all, they are the red-haired pirates. How can they let others trample on their dignity so easily? The pirates' reaction was just surprise, but Marine was different because they knew better. Marine Headquarters, Marina Fando. In front of a long conference table, the current Marine Fleet Admiral Sengoku crossed his hands and put them in front of his mouth. Lieutenant General he was sitting on the left side, while Garp was eating Senbei in a heartless manner. As for the three generals, they were sitting separately, as if no one knew each other. However, what is different is that the big screen in front of them is playing the entire process of the fierce battle between Tren and the Golden Lion. This thing is not easy to get, Kazaru said with a vulgar expression while sharpening his nails carelessly. As soon as the newspaper was published, Sengoku asked Kazaru, who was on a mission in New World, to find Morgans and have a friendly exchange with him. After that, Morgans was very happy to hand over the video. However, even though Kazaru's tone was a bit ironic, his eyes never left the battle scene on the screen. After all, he had to understand clearly so that he could find reasons to paddle in the future. The other generals were also silent, watching this thrilling battle quietly. Thank you for your hard work, Pelusolino. Crane showed a smile to Kazaru. Oh, I can't bear your old man's thanks. Kazaru waved his hand and responded with a smile. The scene fell into a brief silence. After a long time, Warring States finally spoke and asked. So, what do you think of this young man named Jenny Tren? Akainu said with a sullen face and a cold tone, this is just an evil pirate killing another even more evil pirate. If possible, I want to kill this guy right now. Oh, are you sure you can do it? Kazaru glanced at Akainu and raised the corners of his mouth slightly, with a hint of teasing. You must have witnessed the ability that the young man showed just now with your own eyes. This power is not easy to deal with. Hearing this, Akainu turned his head sharply, stared at the man with a lewd smile, and shouted angrily, Korosalino. Do you think I will be as timid as you? Faced with Akainu's question, Kazaru just smiled and said nothing more. Okay. Warring states slammed the table hard, trying to quiet the two people who were arguing, what we need to discuss now is about Jenny Tren. At this time, Aokiji, who also had the ability of ice fruits, spoke slowly, his voice low and steady, he is very powerful in developing fruits. This is the evaluation I gave him. At this time, his eyes fell on the swordsman next to the young man, with a hint of surprise in his eyes. And the swordsman, this guy's strength is also quite terrifying. If you observe carefully, you will find that during the battle between him and Shaki, this guy actually resisted all attacks. Shaki could only try his best it's just a way to contain him. Crane is still as reliable as ever. Warring states finally breathed a sigh of relief after listening to his old partner's comments. His eyes also followed the crane's gaze and fell on the man who was chewing food. Warring states frowned and shouted to the man. Garp, don't you have anything to say? Garp was startled by Sengoku's sudden shout. He raised his head blankly, scratched his head, and replied innocently, Ah! Haven't you already said everything you need to say? I still have something to say. What can I add? Warring States was so angry that he almost vomited blood. He was about to scold Garp a few words, but saw Garp's expression suddenly changed. I saw Garp saying thoughtfully, But Xiaohei is right, these guys are not easy to mess with. Because I had just dealt with them a few days ago, when I was trying to win them over to join Marine. It's a pity. At this point, Garp shook his head helplessly. Huh. As soon as Garp said this, everyone turned their attention to him, as if waiting for the marine hero's next words. It didn't work. Ha ha ha. Garp laughed. Garp. Warring states. Garp's face darkened and he said slowly. I don't know about the young man named Tren, but the guy named Li Jing is really scary. The reason why I didn't succeed is because this guy could completely block him by himself. Quote. It makes you feel horrible. Seeing that Garp didn't look like he was joking, Sengoku couldn't help but turn around and stare at the Tren group in the video. 50 undecided, fishing in a nest. However, we can be sure that this group of people were not pirates when they killed the Golden Lion, because we don't have any previous information about them. He looked at the solemn-looking Sengoku and said this very obscure sentence. She knew very well that Warring States was now facing pressure from above, but he still wanted to remind Warring States through this sentence. Because there is still a grand line in the New World, and the Red Earth Continent has already shared too much of Marine's combat power, what should we do if Tren and his gang are assigned to be pirates at this time? And anyone with a clear eye at the scene could see that if Tren was really to be captured, at least a force of at least a lieutenant general or above would have to be deployed. Of course, this was Marine's opinion. Sengoku, 
He is right, otherwise I wouldn't want to drag them into Marine. Ha ha. Garp agreed with his words in a ha ha tone. Alas, listening to the words of his two old friends, warring states didn't know the reason, but now the death of Golden Lion and Tren's fame have been spread throughout the country through newspapers. There are currently two attitudes from above. Either Tren and his group accept the system of the seven warlords of the sea, and because of their combat power, they need to go to New World to serve as a containment point for marines and pirates. Otherwise, the world government can also look at the backs of the Tren people and recruit them as members of the CP organization. It is obvious that the world government is interested in the combat power of Tren and the group, and has no intention of giving it to Marine. Sure enough, just as Warring States was meditating, the phone next to him rang, and then a face with sunken eyes appeared, and his tone was very calm, as if he was giving an order. Sengoku, I have given full authority to CP to deal with the affairs of Tren and his group. Marine should not interfere. Listening to the call bug, Sengoku's eyebrows instantly wrinkled, this is Marine's right. Sengoku, Marine also serves the world government. After saying this, the phone worm hung up directly. Bang. Warring states slammed his fist on the table, and then looked at the specially convened meeting. At this moment, he felt like a bit of a clown. Finally, he waved his hand helplessly, the meeting was dissolved, and the affairs of Tren and his group were handed over to the CP organization. Looking at the warring states period, the three generals didn't say anything. They stood up and left first. Their main responsibility was in the new world. The abacus is so loud. After most people left, warring states sat on a chair. Ha ha. Sengoku, believe me, they will definitely come back to beg you. Garp opened another bag of senbei. Garp is right, and we don't have the energy to take care of this right now. I heard that Whitebeard has another captain of the second division, who is very powerful. He said calmly, and then slowly looked at Garp. Yes, where is, Fire Fist, Ace, a supernova who just recently emerged. Right, Garp. Hey, undecided, Garp pretended to be dead. Garp, don't pretend to be asleep. Dot dot dot. In the first half of the Great Line, above the sea, the Black Pearl is anchored here. After several days of sailing, Tren and others finally entered the Grand Line this time. You shouldn't. I'll be more handsome if I show my profile. Li Jing looked at the newspaper in his hand, shaking his head and clicking his tongue. Come on, how many times have you seen it, and you haven't seen enough yet? Tren, who was on the deck, rolled his eyes as he looked at Li Jing. At the same time, he had a stick in his hand, and there was a thread tied to the stick. At this time, there was a splash, and under the Black Pearl boat, Timo's small figure emerged from the water and took a breath. Captain Tren, the bottom of the boat is not damaged. Timo looked at Tron on the boat with a confused look on his face. Then he pulled the rope tied around his waist with his hand and said helplessly, Also, one of my former teammates was particularly good at fighting in the water. So I am also very good at water, so I don't need to tie a rope, Captain Tren. Quote. Why don't you mention Mo? You are taking a look. I always feel that there is still something wrong. I don't believe you ask Xiao Hei. After saying this, Tren pointed guiltily at the boat elf Xiao Hei who was sitting on the guardrail. Captain, you are right. It is possible, probably, and should be. Xiao Hei looked at Tren's threatening eyes, his eyes wandering directly. As a ship elf, how could he not know if there was something wrong with the ship? As that so, Timo frowned, then moved his hands and looked at the hull of the Black Pearl. Captain, wouldn't it be bad to use Timo to catch sea monsters? Li Jing came over at this time. Still saying, if you guys weren't so good at eating, how could there be no meat on the ship? Tren glared at Li Jing, then smiled slightly. But this leader has always been fair and impartial, so you should also take a shower tonight. Li Jing. Li Jing. Captain, here we come. Xiao He stared at the unfolded radar and patted Tren's arm frantically. At the same time, Timo on the sea still knew nothing. There is indeed no problem. Timo touched his chin, and suddenly he found that the sea water around him suddenly became dark, and it was not because of the shadow effect of the black pearls. But something is rushing towards me. Captain. Timo just yelled, and a sea monster similar to a moray eel rushed out of the sea with its mouth wide open, and Timo was immediately thrown up by Tren. Wow, Sadako covered her mouth with her little hand and sighed. I took the bait. Tren was also overjoyed. Timo, who was thrown into the air, looked at the giant mouth of the sea beast under him, and subconsciously took out the secret poison bomb. No, looking at the movements of Timo's hand, Tron drew the stick again, and Timo was thrown out of the air in a perfect arc. And Li Jing also drew his sword immediately. After a few sword rays, the huge sea beast was perfectly cut into pieces. The side of the Black Pearl is also under the control of Xiao He, with conveyor belts and mechanical arms extending out to perform a series of tasks such as pulling, segmenting, and transmitting. Dot dot dot. Captain, why, that night, Timo looked at Tren with a small plate of meat. I didn't expect that this hateful sea beast would suddenly attack you when you were checking the Black Pearl. Terran tore off a piece of meat with an angry look on his face. Really? Then you tie me. What are you tying? Is that a rope? That's my care and love for you, Timo. Tren stepped forward and hugged Timo. I am just worried that something like this will happen, so I have prepared safety measures for you. You must understand my feelings, Captain. 
Or do you think I'm the kind of person who would use my team members to catch sea monsters? Although I say I am undecided and go fishing in my nest, I am not such a person. Quote. Captain Tren. Looking at Tren's sighing expression, Timo actually wanted to believe it too. But when he saw Li Jing, who was also soaking in the sea in the dark with a rope tied to his body, he fell silent. Li Jing, you want to move. You see Taimado is energetic this morning. Can't you learn from it? No. I'm already old. 